Eve University pilots. We are joined today by Insidious Sainted, a highly experienced FC from Blue Republic who has graciously volunteered to discuss from the perspective of our opposition the events of the recently concluded November 2018 RVB vs EUNI war. He will touch on both what we did well along with what we could improve upon during future conflicts. He will also share some tips that individual pilots can personally do to improve their PvP skills. Please note, this lecture will be recorded so pilots who could not join us today will be able to benefit from this as well. With that, please welcome our guest speaker, Insidious Sainthood. Like you said, my name is Insidious Sainthood. I've been playing EVE for 11 and a half years, more or less, not on this tune. This is my newer tune. I, I lost my old one due to some ill-advised decisions. Currently of Blue Republic, recently out of a war with EVE University, mostly their high sec office. Mostly a PvP pilot, I uh, do very little PvE, flown in three Alliance tournaments poorly. And I mentioned it to somebody else, but I make most of my living in EVE through PvP. I do not, I don't have a trade alt, I don't uh, do manufacturing other than the occasional, like I, somebody gave me a free Megathron blueprint, so I'm going to make a whole 18 mil off of three Megathrons, so uh, very, very little side income. So recently, uh, Eve Uni was at war with both RVB. So let me, uh, real quick, RVB is actually two alliances, which uh, most of you probably know by now. We, we get to fly in the alliance tournament as one corp because we're like permanently with each other. But the blue, the blue war lapsed, and I actually was at work all week. I, I'm a traveling nerd. And so I only got like 48 hours of pew against you guys. Uh, so, but out of that, just to give you some other stats, there were 109 wartime kills, including pods versus uh, Blue Republic, and 67 of those were mine. So if you do the quick math, that is 69.7% of all your blue losses uh, were mine. So that's, anyway, that's the short or the long version of who I am. I really want to do a quick poll, though. How many people enjoyed the war? How many learned something or at least enjoyed the war? X. Yeah, double X. I'm glad, I'm glad, because uh, the, fir the first rule, I, I think it's a subset, like, it's not the first rule, it's the 0.5 rule of EVE, because we all know the first rule of EVE is you can't afford to lose it, don't fly it, same as the second rule, but, like, the half-step rule before that is it's, it's still a game, it's not a job, there's some loss mechanics that make it pretty fun, but at the end of the day, it's a game, you should enjoy it, so hopefully you guys all enjoyed it, and nobody was too taken aback or put in the poor house. Yeah, a lot better than the pirate. Yeah, who who likes being dropped on by twenty five polarized vindicators? Like you guys don't like that either. So anyway, uh, having fun with the war. Ed, uh, I, I know that I fought a lot of you guys on gates with like my golem and my tengu. Uh, some of that was just purious. Like I'd like to say there was skill in that, but no, that was mostly purious. Uh, just for reference, a couple of people asked the golem fit along with the pod that I was running, the high crystal pod, it was like an eight and a half billion dollar ship. So uh, don't feel bad you didn't blow it up, even though you guys got really close a couple of times. <laughs> uh, but I don't want to talk about that because I mean, if you throw enough isk at something, you can usually tank a small number of people. Uh, same with the tengu. Uh, but what I wanted to point out was a few minor things most of you guys flew really well uh, i could tell when you guys were paying attention to comms and follow, following your fcs uh, there were a few things that can make pvp a little bit better i guess because uh, it, it is a large part of the game and it is actually really fun once you know what you're doing nobody likes to go out and get kicked in the face it was nice to see you guys get some of your own back um, we we had the little after action where we all met up in Black Rise and you guys brought just enough Lodgy that we couldn't, not only couldn't kill anything uh, substantial, but then we got mopped the floor, came back, you guys mopped the floor with us again, and then we got really mopped the floor with by those uh, third party fleets who took our dreads. So it's nice to see you guys come back. Yeah, uh, my son here, uh, in case you guys saw him, a Master Star Destroyer uh, is my son. He's actually next to me right now, but he is a traitor to the cause. He's playing Fortnite, so. Um, so first thing off the, the first fight, there was a, the first night I got there, I think it was like Thursday night, somebody was camping the gate in the Talos and I have the, the kill mail here, actually three of them, Abhishek Benali, sorry if I butcher your name, let me just pull up the link, 
one thing that I noticed right away, this is how I was able to kill these three Talai, Taloses, whatever, in a very short amount of time, was he kept warping directly from your guys' Citadel to 100 off the gate. He warped off once, warped off twice, and came back in both times as I was positioning around the gate. Uh, he warped back at 100, so all I did was warp to your guys' Citadel, warp back at 100, bookmark it, and waited till he was coming out of warp and caught him up there, but I caught him three times. So one uh, one tip you'll learn, especially when you gate camp for a uh, prolonged period of time, is you want to burn away, get like a, a little interceptor, burn away from the gate, and make a bookmark with nothing behind it. You want no celestials, no moons, no belts, and that way nobody can warp into you. If you're gonna be lazy with your bookmarks, use a warp in like that, and that way, nobody can get to you without being very obvious about it. Um, does anybody have questions about that little particular piece of information? Uh, second thing, in addition to that, how many of you people saw Lilith Alderoth in local? The shuttle, the uh, Tyra, the Kestrel, the Heron. And so that's my alt. Uh, several, almost every time, you guys let me warp in a neutral alt. Uh, it was actually not eyes, it was my warp in. So I was floating around in a shuttle. I would float behind uh, the Talos. Uh, I believe I got the Stratios the same way. Uh, a couple other kills where I was able to reposition or when we were playing the station games, I was warping her 50 behind uh, the target and then I could warp to her at 50, put me at zero, able to get scram web and put, uh, you know, put a kill mail up. Um, so when you're at war or even, I mean, neutral eyes is good, but watch where the neutral eyes are going. If you see somebody on field for 48 hours and you keep losing ships, you might want to not position yourself near a neutral. Third thing that I really noticed was, uh, does it, was anybody in the fight where I crashed the gate from, J uh, what is it, Juff to Amy in a MOA and you guys had a gate camp and I was able to burn off and I killed an Atron and almost killed another Atron? You guys had like, I don't know, eight or nine caracals on the gate, a couple executors. All right, well, not. Uh, I think it was Saturday morning, could have been Friday night. Uh, it was a mo. Anyway, I sniped. I could go look it up, but I'm really slow at it. And I, I made my mouse button my talk button, so it makes it hard to change screens. Um, there was no scram. I'm going to blame this one on the FCs, not on you guys, not on the line guys. Um, but when you have a uh and especially because it was an a b uh web scram fleet with no propulsion except for i think two atrons and uh whoever that infernal griffin uh by the way we, we want to reward deck you just to kill the uh guy that was always in the griffin you earned our eternal hatred uh, <laughs> uh he caused much much consternation anyway yeah um there was no tackle. All you guys had long points, so I was able to jump in and burn directly away from your fleet, even though I started well within scram range of 10 or 15 ships. Uh, I was able to burn out, kill an Atron. I actually would have got both Atrons, and I think there was a slicer on field, but I forgot to change my ammo. I was like super excited that I escaped the, the camp. Yeah, okay, we'll t I'll take you up on that, Turlo. We'll, uh, we don't like that Griffin pilot. He was really good, though. He was super annoying, so props to him. Uh, that's what a Griffin's supposed to do. Uh, but there was no scrams. Like, there was no way. If, if you guys had even got a, a web or a scram on me for half a second, I would have lost that MOA shamefully. Um, so when you have fast tackle, sometimes, especially if you have more than one, you had two Atrons on field, one of them should have had a scram. Um, or at least a double web or some way to take off a micro warp drive or shut down a, a micro jump drive. If I had jumped in and it was all points, I could have jumped in any battleship and just hit a micro jump drive and jumped out. Um, those were the three really biggest things. Uh, anybody have any questions up to this point? Uh, if you guys hold a class on how to annoy people with griffins, I will reward that beauty. I'm in the RVB command channel, but I travel a lot, like a lot, a lot. Uh, I'm always flying, always on the road. So I, I, like I said, I was five days into the war <laughs> before I knew we were at war because uh, I'd been on the road. And uh, uh, so I, I don't know all the time. So I don't make those decisions. I think we were going to, but I think we're 
uh, giving it a week break at least because we're at war with somebody else and we want to go clear out a system and put up a citadel. So I'm not sure. Uh, favorite kill and favorite loss. Uh, big fan of solos. Uh, there was a double cruiser kill. I really, I really like it when you uphill fights. I mean, everybody feels. We're, I, I'm from America. We have a big history of uh, rooting for the underdog. Uh, I was really, really happy to catch three uh, Taloses, Talai again. I don't know. Uh, so that was fun. My favorite loss was the tornado. You guys killed me. I tackled the tornado in the Moa. And I got nuded out, and the tornado. I, I died with the tornado at like five or ten percent hull. I was super excited and super bummed that I did not catch that tornado. That was one of those where I moved back and forth across the grid. The tomato, uh, that tornado pilot, super cagey, by the way, super annoying to be at war with. But that's a uh, that's some good flying, good dodging there because I really wanted that tornado. Uh, but I, I used my all back and forth, and we kept jumping back and forth between those two stations on grid. And uh, you guys had the response fleet and just totally melted my MOA. Uh, I did also enjoy, I know some of you guys enjoyed shooting at my Golem. Um, I had just bought that, to be honest. And so it was super nerve wracking. I had the shakes. Uh, right before the war ended, you guys caught me off gate. I forgot that I had jumped through a gate. And so I'm 12 off with no egress and uh no micro jump drive and so like i start panicking nobody's online to bring me more cat boosters there's no we didn't have any falcon alts or or blackbirds in the system so i got like the really good early uh early eve career pvp shake so that was a pretty fun one too i didn't lose it but and you guys didn't lose anything either but it was a super fun fight uh any more questions All right. Yeah. See, I usually get this. I'm a terrible lecturer. I just figured I'd uh, we'd go through it. A um, couple other things. Just uh, so I know some of you got frustrated, uh, and some of the FCs got frustrated because I wouldn't engage all the time. Like I refused to lose my golem to like 900 newt ships. Uh, I'll find the Griffin pilot. We got him a couple times, but I'll find out who it is. Um, but you guys got a little upset. But I I fund all of that. That golem. And the, the crystal pod that is in that $8 billion I made through PVP. That Tengu I have, which is not nearly as pricey as the Golem, is made through PVP. Um, I actually end up losing a couple ships throughout the week because I'm trying to grab loot to pay and buy more ammo and, and reship and stuff like that. Um, yes, Asari was one of them. There was one other one, but Asari uh, was in a Griffin for a while. Um, and so I don't always engage, like as much fun it is, is to watch beautiful spaceships blow up more beautifully than they flew. I do not, uh, I can't usually afford to whelp, uh, <laughs> a $4 billion ship just for fun. And so it comes down to a little bit of, uh, of perspective. So it's, you know, Eve's my game, Eve is your game, but we play this game differently. I come at it, I like to be, I'm mostly a solo pilot. If you go look at my board, uh, it's 50% solo, and it actually should be about 75%, but if you guys are familiar with session change timers and stuff, somebody shoots you 10 minutes ago, and you don't leave system, and I shoot you and kill you, it'll show up as a non-solo kill, even if you went and repped. Uh, so I I fly a lot solo, and, and so it's a completely different versus a training round where they're trying to teach you to form up, see who's got what skills, uh, you know, or orbit your anchor, prop mods on, reload ram, all that fun stuff that uh, that you have to learn for any part of the game. It's still completely different than the way I approach the game. My job is to, like jumping through the gate against the Atrons and the whole fleet, uh, I knew that the fleet was... A long point so I could jump through and burn and was able to get out of range of all the rapid lights which are a wonderful and wonderfully painful weapon system but they only apply up to a certain speed and out to a certain range and so I was able to burn away pick off almost two atrons and keep my ship well unfortunately I like Eve Uni but I was able to deny you guys any kills which I feel great about personally and bad because you guys are a training corp um, I don't want anybody to uh to not like the game because they didn't get to kill anybody. Um, was there a specific moment that you found either particularly frustrating or the opposite huzzah moment? I was actually kind of bummed I didn't kill anything in the golem. You guys had 
four or five execs on the field. Um, I was super, super kind of frustrated when we did the Black Rise one because you guys primaried my Drake. And I didn't notice you were hitting me. And I was in, like, I already lost a third of my shield. Somebody says, oh, Insidious needs reps. And I was gone. And so I didn't get to stay on field very long. And I had no reship. So that was kind of a bummer. Um, I did I did like to test out the golem because I wasn't uh, super comfortable with it. So now I know a little bit more. I was super bummed out. Yeah, your Lodgy did do a really good job. Uh, personally, frustrating. I think you guys brought too many Lodgy because we didn't get to kill anything, but that's your job. So I, I don't know. I think that's really a down point for you guys, just a down point for us. You, you had some, some good Lodgy. I wish I had engaged the first night when I was in the Tengu. You guys had like eight or ten Caracals, but I wasn't sure of the skill level. And it wasn't until I looked at my logs and noticed that you guys were firing T1 ammo that I could have taken the fight. So I, I missed out on mopping the floor with like eight caracals. So that was kind of a bum. I can talk about a little bit on the wormhole. I was in the first one, fought you guys on it. I think I got caught out of positions. You actually got my Legion. Um, I was dinking around and you guys were able to get me, which was uh, surprising. And uh, he says, yeah, that was a nice kill. Um, I came back and nobody would come and get, I went and got another Legion and came right back, but you guys had flogged or moved on or whatever. I was kind of bummed out. I wanted revenge. Um, so we went in and it was kind of a loose, uh, a loose idea. We didn't really schedule it as a real op to go in. We didn't think that you guys would put up that much resistance. We were hoping to catch you uh, a little disorganized. We had a close hole. It was only like two jumps from our base. So that was nice. Uh, or no, six jumps. So, uh, but only like four jumps from Jito, whatever. And so we went in, uh, started kicking around, <laughs> didn't bring enough DPS because your stupid Citadel was uh, kind of shutting us down. And then we had that little uh, action. And then unfortunately I had to drive. I drove like, I don't know, 1500 miles that weekend. So I missed the rest of it. And uh, But I, I got a little after action on our side. And they said that you guys did a wonderful job. They said they went in, somebody rolled the hole. Uh, we got in, we got our scout, and you guys had just like barricaded the hole, super lodgy, bubbled it up or whatever, and mounted just an awesome defense and kicked us clean out of it, is what I had heard. Um, we were plan We originally actually planned on, uh, we were running a little low on funds. So the original wormhole attack was to hopefully put a little bit of ISK back in RVB's pocket. So we were going to siege like two of the, the citadels. I don't think we were going to do all of them. Um, and then obviously we, we lost our hats in that, that fight. Yeah, logging off during a, a fleet thing is, is actually normal. I was once with uh, the Important Internet Spaceship League, B Deal, and we actually camped Bob, which is now IT Alliance, which is... I think it's still IT. I don't know who it is now. And we were just kicking them out of uh, Providence, and they went down a one-way pipe, and they logged off. And then they released a, a press release the next morning that made it sound like they kicked our trash. Boom, actually, they logged off for like five hours, logged back in, and snuck out of zero, zero. Um, so, yeah, sometimes it's frustrating to try and camp somebody in a hole. And if you don't have good probes or if they have a cloak and can log off, it's just, just the nature of zero, zero space, which wormholes are. Other things, so I noticed some of you were super cagey to engage. Now, granted, after like the first 24 hours and I already had like 40 kills, I don't know that I would shoot me either. So uh, fair enough there. But I noticed some of you were, were really hesitant to engage like both days, the whole time. And I just wanted to address that. At the end of the day, they're pixels on a screen. Yeah, I know there's a loss mechanic. Yeah, I know stuff looks super pricey. But at the same time, no risk, no reward. You, if you catch a, we caught a, one of your guys' nemesis. And not only did I catch it during a fight, you guys were worried about the fleet, which is fine. Um, but I was able to sneak back and grab the loot during a fleet fight on field. And I, I pulled 100 and, 120 mil, 130 mil off of it. Uh, it's the nemesis kill. And was able to sneak out and that paid for like half the ships I lost during the war. Um, not saying that every ship's going to be a loot pinata, but uh, the old saying is, is you lose 100% of the fights you don't take. I, I would encourage you guys all to take a little bit more risk. 
if if not against uh, war targets, try it against each other. Do one v one. Um, yeah, it's a logistics. It is a logistics question, but you can get used to it, get more comfortable with it. The more you fly a ship, the more you engage multiple targets with a ship. And I don't mean at the same time until later, but you know, take out uh, somebody mentioned in Cursus, shoot at a slasher, shoot at a Kestrel, shoot at a breacher. You know, even if they're the on the market, you know, 800k Eve Uni doctrine fits you'll get a feel for it, just like in the real life. You know how your keyboard types, you know how your car feels, you know how your significant other performs in bed. You learn all these things as you uh, spend more time with it. And it's the same with spaceships in EVE. And then you know, when I jump in, like I took a 2v1 fight in a Kestrel, I knew that I could kill a ship and possibly two, and I was very close to killing two in a Kestrel because I knew exactly how the Kestrel performs against all the holes that you guys had on field. It is a logistics thing, uh, sometimes moving it, sometimes ISK, but you can even do the meta fits. If any of you guys watched Eve is Easy, Suetonia's videos, even the old ones are gold. I mean, he takes, now granted, he has a, a fairly high level skill, but he takes a 17 day old meta rifter out in a zero zero and starts killing T2 interceptors, T2 fit interceptors. And just, uh, I mean, his ship's paid for in the first holy kills. It doesn't matter what he loses, as long as there's a T2 item that drops, his ship's basically paid for. So I re recommend it. It is it's a very fun. Now there there are hardcore PVPers like myself where that's all we do. There are people who never undock, and we've all been to Jita. That's less fun. And then there's the the hybrids where you do some PVE, some PVP, sometimes solo, sometimes fleet, uh, sometimes small gang. But it, it's a big part of the game, and it's really fun. There's that whole you know testosterone, hairy chest beating if you want, prove your skill against somebody else. Just the the mastery of the ship. I recommend trying it. Grab some ships. Uh, you'll hear everybody say 10 ships. Finding the fight can be hard. Even like I had an entire system and there were hours, like two or three hours in a row where you guys didn't undock. I get most of my solo good fights right now because I'm too lazy to go to zero zero, the whole logistics things and having PVP ships on standby. I don't have a home out in zero zero anymore. So I go to faction warfare. I'm super lazy. And because I work a lot, I go to black cries. And so uh, faction warfare. This is actually my only real high sec uh, war deck recently. I used to do them before. I haven't done them lately. So I go to faction warfare. I go to I go to black rise novices. The cool thing about novice plex is, is I think it's kind of a goofy game mechanic, the novice plex. But you're guaranteed not to fight anything bigger than a T1 frigate. Yes, that includes navy. Yes, that includes pirate. But you you can warp out. You you shut your D. I set my D scan to point two. If I'm just going to camp in one, which I usually don't, I, I fly around and try to catch people on the wing. But you can sit there and you can warp out. So if you're super risk adverse, you can run one of those double or triple tanked uh, in Cursus or the Breacher, Hookbill, any of those. Uh, Hookbill's a little pricey. And just sit there and catch people at zero. Real quick tips. So if you're going to cap, when you land in a novice, there's, a, there's the beacon and then there's the warp in beacon. Burn to the warp in beacon. You should only be like 2K off of it. Overheat your prop mod, overheat your tackle, and wait. And overheat your tank also, just because it saves you time later. Uh, yes, if you don't have it, train Thermal Dynamics 1. You should train it to 4 as soon as you can if you're going to PvP, but train it to 1 because heat matters. Um, I mean, it's 30% more speed on a prop mod. So, And then as soon as somebody warps in, if, if you're watching your D-scan, say you're an Incursus and a Kestrel's going to land or another Incursus, you're like, hey, that's a, that's a fair matchup. I have a good chance of taking this. As soon as they come out of warp, not not all the way out of warp, but once they land on grid and they're like 5K off you, once you know which direction, uh, you know, left, right, front, side, click on them and hit hit your prop mod and hit approach and then start spamming your, uh, your target. I use control C. If you want to use the overview, that's fine. And then as soon as it starts targeting, you know, the little circle, two second countdown, hit your, your, uh, your scram, your point, your web, whatever it is. This is a scram maneuver, by the way. Don't use this with the point. That would be dumb. Uh, and that way, by the time they lock you back and they turn on their prop mod, you can catch them and establish your orbit, put them at your optimal, and now you control the field. Um, later, if you got, yeah, it does work with catching garmers. I can catch snaked garmers in a double web armor slow as christmas kestrel and if you don't believe me go check my board uh daredevils su uh, succubuses are a little harder because they scale really well with pricey mods but if you have a scram ship you want to put some blasters in somebody's face go park it on the beacon wait till they're 
just about out of warp because you don't want to hit approach. If they're like 30K before they come out of warp and you hit approach, you're going to start going towards the gate and they're going to land behind you and then you lose that precious time and that precious 2K distance when turning around. Um, you, you know, one second server takes. So anyway, you slam into them, overheat everything. As soon as you get tackle, unoverheat it, establish your orbit, your keep it range, whatever. Beautiful, melt face, collect loot, go home a winner. So, so, so somebody slammed into my Kestrel with the curse. Yes, if you killed my Kestrel and if it was one-on-one, -on -one, you did a very good job. I have over a thousand solo kills in the Kestrel. So, ah, 2v1. Still, if you killed, like, if I took the fight, the odds are you you probably earned it. So good job on that. Uh, again, I have I, mostly in the armor Kestrel, but between the armor and the shield Kestrel, I have, I think it's like 1,200 solo kills. So anyway, that's how I do it. There are other ways to do it. you find find a style that fits there are, there are good ships across every race for pvp if you want uh, uh we can do one later and maybe i can show people a couple tactics on how to get into faction warfare it's not hard the novice removes all the super obvious gankage and then you just have to warp out on some pirate ships or the occasional 400 dps tank astero or whatever but that's easy to overcome too and don't like don't be afraid like i ha in the kestrel i have killed every Thing but a succubus solo? I don't think so because everybody puts the uh, A type afterburner and then it goes faster than the dual webs. I don't think I've soloed a succubus just because I can't hold on to it long enough. Uh, but I think I've killed every other pirate and faction frigate in a Kestrel. So a T2, a T2 fit, some of it's meta. I think the whole fit cost me 11 or 13 mil. I know I do have max skills, so you know, grain of salt there. But you, I mean, cheap. You're out the door, and if you can kill the average frigate drops like two mil, if it's T2 fit, if you can if you can keep it alive for three or four fights, you you break even. After that, it's just fun. You get the kill marks. It, it feels good. I mean, there's there's really no loss. So that's the camping trip. If you're gonna camp, um, so I mostly roam, but sometimes when you're roaming, you have to set up for a short camp. So if I'm jumping, jumping system, jumping system, jumping system, and I see there's like specifically at Garmers and Slicers because they're always snaked, they're always fast. Just remember those two things and you'll have less problems with Garmers and Slicers. So I will go to a novice or if they're in the novice, I'll go to a small if there's no other traffic in the system, if I'm not going to get blapped. And I'll go set up at zero and as soon as they come out of warp, I'll slam into them. If it's a nano kite uh, slicer, I can delete it in a Kestrel in like four four hits, four or five salvos of rockets. No big deal. Uh, if it's a Garmer, they're a little bit tanky. They're pirate, so they have a little bit better profile. They, It's actually a race. A Kestrel versus a Garmer, even if I catch him, if he's pure Kaidi and I catch him, he's dead. If he's got the armor um, and he's like a hybrid Kaidi, then it's a little bit harder. I and mean, then it comes down to like 50-50, but I'm risking 13 mil. He's risking 180 mil or whatever's on his ship. So it's still worth taking the fight. If you win once every 20 times, you still come out ahead on the ISK. If you're in something slow, if you're in a micro warp drive, so real, just real quick, it's, it's obvious once you hear it. If something that's normally fit to be scram and afterburner, like an incursus, and you're in something kitey and he's already in the plex, you can go in, but the first thing you want to do is worry about your prop mod. So as you're taking the gate, overheat your prop mod. As soon as you land, double click away from him. Like already have your camera set up. Don't wait because seconds count. Overheat your prop mod, click in space, and wait until you get out of his range. Um, or wait until at least your prop mod's on to target and then apply your web and scram and all that because speed matters. If you're kitey and you get caught by a scram AV, you're dead because odds are they're going to be brawly and you're going to get melted. So the ver reverse is true. If there's already a Garmer in the Nov, don't slide in with an AB incursus. You're just looking to free trip back to Jita to get another ship. And that, that ruins everybody's day. I mean, it's, it's not fun. Uh, second thing, you can fit in a cheap hauler, put some T1 rigs on. You don't even rig it. I think in an unrigged hauler, you can still move like five or six frigs. Uh, you, if you rig, even T1 rig it and put all cargos on, uh, nobody's going to blow it up because after it's all fit, it's going to be like 40 mil, whatever. Haul it out somewhere. Like I use Tama Numi, which is next to Asakai, uh, just because if you fly through Tama, that's dumb and you deserve to die, even if you're new. Sorry about that. No offense. Um, Tama has been camped for like 15 years. So uh, I go to Tama Numi, drop off, and that way you have a quick reship. You don't want to jump 12 jump stack to Jita or nine jump, you know, wherever your, your uh, hub is to get another frigate. 
Um, so, you know, little logistics, spend some time, set it up the night before. Like if you're going to spend all day Saturday, like Friday night while you're watching uh, movies with the, the spouse, just autopilot your hauler out there. Let's see what other questions. PVP is my sole source of income. So I don't take every fight. Some people will tell you to take every fight. Uh, Joe Bain, uh, the streamer, he'll tell you to take every fight. Especially when you're newer, don't. Don't slam ever almost never slam into a worm. First of all, they're OP. They're almost going to turn a uh, AT ship. Uh, but don't just go face ramming in your your little AB and curses into any pirate frigate. You know you might have to be a little uh, judicial in your in your fight picks. So if you like I said, if you see an, you're in an curses, you've seen an curses, go ahead and take the fight. You know uh, if hopefully it's low skill. Now if you look and the guy's got. Uh, you know, his characters from 08 or 03, um, you might not want to take the fight. <laughs> so let me let me circle back around real quick. So some of the tools I use, I almost always have Z-Kill open. As soon as I see a name, and I did this with you guys in the war, I drop it in, I look, oh, look, this guy has no kills and he's in a, lo uh, a legion. So you guys lost a legion on like Thursday night. I saw the legion. I popped the name into Z-Kill. Uh, the pilot had almost no kills. So I kept busy while I hurried and ran my alt to Jita or Dodixie because uh, it was a close hub, grabbed a Typhoon because I knew I could do tort damage, had my boy log in and he hurried and travel fit a Typhoon. And we suicided those two Typhoons specifically to kill that Legion because odds are the Legion's going to be more. Yeah, we got a bunch. Yeah, he's super happy about it because we came out is positive. Barely. The Legion was not as pricey as we were hoping, but we killed a, a T3, which always looks good on the kill board. And we came out is positive because we pulled a stiletto. We got the loot and the Legion was slightly more expensive. Um, so I use Z-Kill. Uh, there are other websites, Pirates Little Helper, EveOvermind.com, uh, but Intel. Intel is super handy. I mean, you guys use it. You guys have eyes. Uh, eyes are the alt eyes are the, or cloaky eyes are the first level. Uh, Intel channel. I use Z Kill. Um, I look at age. I also use the the bio. Just I just double click on the character. If he's in, you know, a pirate ship. If he's a pirate ship and he's three months old, I'm gonna engage it. I don't care what I'm in. If I'm in a badger, I'll engage it. Uh, if he's, you know, in a worm and he's from 2006, I'm probably gonna go the other way just because I don't want to waste the ship. Um, so use a little bit of Intel, use a little bit of, uh, you know, common sense. Don't take every fight unless you really, really want to, or you're making a really cool video. So that's what I use. And so I'll, I'll pull through and I'll look and I'll take in a Kestrel. Uh, it's, it's my favorite ship. So don't think that there's any much of the Tormentor, great boat. Merlin, great. Uh, the Breacher is awesome. Uh, some ships scale better. So the, the Kestrel is excellent, low SP requirement, great damage application, doesn't scale. The, you put a bunch of bling on a Kestrel, it does like no better. But you take something like the Breacher with the, the standard AB, uh, medium ancillary, uh, armor ancillary, the small ancillary armor with drones, you put a little bit of bling on that or even the cheapo hard shell. You, you take a hard shell one, they're like 200K or whatever. You just got 3% more rep on both your shield and your armor. So the, the, the Breacher, a little bit harder to fly because it's got drones, it's got missiles, it's got shield, it's got armor, but it scales much better. The more money you put into the Breacher, the better it does. Uh, pirate ships especially are like that. Uh, you throw money at a Garmer, it just gets stupid. You throw money at a Daredevil, it just gets stupid. Um, so, but anyway, so pick a ship. Don't, don't think that they're all any, you know, find one that you like, find one, make a ship work. I, I fly ships that nobody likes sometimes, and I make them work. I try to, the Drake, the Drake's in a really bad spot. I have the application fit that you guys uh, killed way faster. I picked the wrong ammo tag and you guys melted it with some Merlins. Uh, good job. Uh, that's their design because the frigate meta is so strong in low sec. Um, so I wanted to kill some frigates. So I took a ship that's arguably really, really crappy and bent it. It doesn't work with every ship. There are no bad ships at Eve. They're just ships that are better at some things than others. So making it, so I, I loot the field. I always try to, I don't always try to, but I genu uh, generally try to take a fight that I know I can win or I have a good chance of winning. Uh, you know, I, I prefer like 60%, but if I can get a 70, 80% chance of winning, boom. Uh, always check your D scan. As soon as you engage in low sec, so this is a 
critical thing. It's like be aligned when they tell you when you're missioning or in low sec and doing uh, anomalies, be always be aligned. Same kind of thing in PVP. As soon as you engage, Eve has no lockouts. There's other than the abyssal stuff, there's no one V one arenas. So as soon as you get tackled, odds are there's a blob. So you start hitting your scanner. I use the, the default key V. Some people set it to the space bar. Some people set it to their mouse, whatever. I hit the D scan. So I have already set it to low. I do, uh, if it's in normal space, I just do one AU because that's usually close. If there's a bunch of citadels and crap that's really close, I set it to point two. So it just shows me the outside of the plex and start spamming it. So as soon as you engage spam it, see, okay, nothing's on thing. A couple seconds later, after you establish your orbit and you get a good feel for the fight, hit V again, hit V. And then a lot of times I will, this, you know, his, a friend will be coming in, you know, it'll be like a little duo flying around Saturday night, whatever. I can kill one, align, like I'll align through the loot. Hopefully there's a celestial behind the loot. If I was going the wrong way, grab the loot and warp right as the guy's coming out of warp or starting to tackle me. So you got to remember just because something shows up on field doesn't mean it can target you. So if it's coming out of the gate, you know, okay, it's going to take 10 seconds to come out of warp. And then I got two or three seconds of targeting time. That's 13 seconds. You can finish off a fight and grab loot sometimes uh, and get off the field. And, and, and there you go. Other, other tricks for PVP. Um, another shift, just get a feel for it. There are a bunch of great guides that show you matchups. Uh, Sutonia did a couple of uh, a Google form that goes through all the frigates, pirate, Navy, and T1, and they show you um, the Kestrel matches. Of, again, that's my favorite. I'm a, I'm a Kaldari fan. I'm a missile fan because I'm lazy. I don't like worrying about transversal. I like that there's no fall off. I like that if, I, if you're in missile range, I do damage. Um, that's a little oversimplification, but that's kind of why. I, yes, Kaldari Master Race. You have it right, Cursed. And I like shields just because I like the extra damage. Armor has a little bit more versatility, but you don't get to put as many ballistic controls. You can look at the matchups, and it's really good. So, uh, again, like I like the Kestrel. I can take almost everything, but even with low skills, the Kestrel matches up well just because it's not damage locked. If you're super risk averse like you really don't want to lose your ship you can overtake the breacher i mean like i said you can put a damage control which is hull tank you can put an armor repper on uh, an aar which is armor tank and then you can put a, a medium ancillary on which is shield tank uh you've overtanked it but you can sit there and just wear somebody down uh you'll see a lot of this with the the hook bill because it has the fifth mid so you'll see damage control aar like web scram ab and then sometimes another web, and then a, 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 sorry, MASB. And it just takes forever to chew through it. I mean, even if you have mad damage, it takes forever to chew through a frigate with you know, 10, 11K EHP if it gets all its reps off. Um, so there are ways to tank it and still be combat effective, even if you're a little risk averse. I don't recommend that because if you go too far away from DPS, especially if you have low gun or missile skills, you might get all your reps off and still not have killed anybody because you're doing you know, 60 DPS. Uh, so, you know, don't, I prefer people to put a little bit of, uh, you know, put a heat sink on or a ballistic on, but, um, but check the matchups. Even the, the one that's from like 2015 is still pretty good. He just released a, a updated one. I'll see if I can find these and, and post them and have them broadcast them to you guys later. I don't have them up right now. Uh, Eve is easy. Soon Tony does a lot of matchups specifically with the Kestrel, uh, but he does some other ones. Uh, but, you know, get a feel for your ship. Take some matchups. You can win. The Tristan, super low. Throw some drones in it. You don't even need any highs. And just kite. You know, you just need a point, an MWD, uh, maybe a nano or two, whatever. Super easy to get into. Super low SP other than the drone problem. And you, you just run away. If you get in the plex first, just go park yourself at 20, overheat your point, and wait for somebody to land. Um, the, the Tristan's very strong in that regard. Sometimes meme fits. You'll see them every once in a while. Uh, the double web, no scram. Frigate fights are so fast and so few, I don't want to say so few people, but a lot of people don't aren't dedicated to PvP that I have hundreds of kills and there's thousands of kills in the game where there's no scram. In fact, uh, if you guys go look at Z-Kill right now, there's a Caduous that just died in an Alliance tournament ship, 200 bill. No point. The Kikimura that killed him had no point. The guy could have warped at any time during the fight. Uh, you'll see the dual web uh, comment, a little pricey if you're in AVUD, maybe if you're a newer player, but the dual web, no scram, 
uh, you just pump out so much DPS, but by the time, even, even me, by the time I notice that there's no scram and I try to align, I'm already dead. You know, we're only talking uh, eight shots. It just does so much damage and there's so much control and so much application that eight shots into it and they're like 1.8 seconds a piece or something. So we're talking, we're talking less than 20 seconds and I'm dead. Um, so there's a lot of ways to win. Uh, there's a lot of ways to be safe. I would recommend you don't be afraid of it. Find a ship you like. Uh, preferably find a ship that you have some skill points for. And if it's not a ship you have skill points for, train into it. You know, you don't want to go in level one uh, Kestrel and you're an Amar character with, you know, and level one rocket and expect to win. You might a couple times. Uh, I, I would pick on ventures at that point. Uh, <laughs> get the uh, the plexing AFK ventures and rifters that are out in Black Rise. But, you know, if you have a Mar, the, the Punisher, there's actually a bunch of Punisher fits that aren't bait. I know that surprises everybody. Don't freak out. Nobody panic. But there are non-bait Punisher fits. Um, the Tormentor is great. Uh, again, for Kaldari, you can even do mean fits like the Bantam. If you guys have seen the Combat Magnate, the Combat Bantam, I don't think the Combat Burst is as good. Uh, but they're, they're the T1 healer boats, and people put uh, medium ancillaries on it and blasters, and you can go, wow. Uh, you can go beat people up. Yeah, Combat Magnate and Combat Bantam are the two that I know of. Uh, we were just playing with a Combat Thalia. Uh, it only does 106 DPS, but it's got T2 resists and an AAR or so. Um, yeah, any other... Did I miss any questions? Psychotic. Uh, the one with Logi, both sides. We had Caracals, Mos, Tackles, etc. We had a mix of red and blue members before you brought in... Oh, the arranged fight. What was your question about that? So I do remember the fight. I remember uh, people got mad because I really wanted to land that golem. But the problem with a golem and siege mod is everybody can outrun it, like literally everything. So I think I only got one Kestrel out of that. And then I got yelled at and censured and laughed at. Um, but that fight was good. There was, a, there was a lot of control on both sides of the gate. I think you guys had numbers, but you were low on Logi. You only had three Logi. And so we were able to punch through and uh, trade a lot of blows, I think, in the first half of that fight. Am I correct? Oh, so, okay, so that's a primary. So that's a fleet thing. So Eve, a lot, a lot of time is about control. So when we bring Caracals, they're a long range. I mean, uh, at my skills with Navy missiles, I get a 67K range on Rapid Lights. So I don't want, uh, you guys had MOAs, I think. I don't want you guys anywhere near, and the Caracal sucks. It has bad cap, it has bad speed, it has bad tank, but it has great damage application. The proverbial paper tiger or glass cannon. Um, so we primary uh, tackle on purpose, because if you get a web or a scram on a Caracal and get even drones on the MOAs, I mean, each MOA only gets three drones, but you get a couple of drones on a, on a Caracal and it'll melt in 10 seconds. Um, so we primary tackle on purpose. It's just like that stupid griffin. You want to primary stuff in fleets, even in small engagements. If you and your buddy go out and there's a, a slasher and say um, an incursus, in that particular case, it's reversed. The slasher is probably tackle. If he burns out and he's got a long point, if you know he's going to be long point and you're both short point, like you're both slow, grab the long point guy first. A, he's going to melt because he's nano. And B, if you let him get range, you know, never get away. He's just going to plink you to death until you run out of charges and you're gone. If you're in something big and you have like a micro jump drive or, you know, your fast tackles coming in or you have long range guns, you can ignore it. So like uh, a lot of a lot of ships you'll see have the micro jump drive that if they're not scrammed, they jump 100 kilometers. So if you align towards a citadel, micro jump drive, you jump 100 and then you spam warp, you'll instantly warp. So you, you can't get caught. So in that case, I would just ignore a, a Kite Slasher or a Stiletto or whatever. I'm like, oh, if he's out at 40K, I don't even care. I'm going to primary the damage, get the damage off the field. Uh, in, that, in the fleet fight, we primaried the Atron. So, A, we can leave whenever we want. Uh, you're not going to get tackle on one of our, our healers, and it's going to get dead, and then we're all going to get deaded. Um, Griffins and Mollusks with the damps and the ECM, super dumb. Um, like Mollus can be almost a, a navy, especially the navy Mollus can be almost as effective as a Griffin. If we're all in Caracals at 60k and you damp us to a 20k lock range, it's just as good as ECM. EC, I'm not an ECM hater. It's just super annoying when it's against you, but everybody loves it when it's on your team. So I don't think I'm a you know ban ECM. I I use it. We 
in EU, uh, in RVB, we're allowed to use ECM drones, just not mids, because a lot of 1v1s and stuff, and it's just really not, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth if you're just 1v1ing and somebody's getting jammed every time. Uh, CCP did nerf E-War. I actually, I think it's a really good balance. People have been complaining for 15 years. I think the fact that it, if you're in a fleet fight, especially where you can only shoot it, uh, it removes the, the Griffin Navy issue from 1v1s and low sec, which again, we're kind of cancerous towards new guys. But yeah, so E-War, I think, I think actually E-War is in a good place. They just bumped it up because it was so oppressive before, but now the fact that you can get jammed and still alpha or at least attack the, the ECM, I think it's really good balance. Um, I've seen a lot of iterations. I don't, I try not to do the bitter vet thing. I assume the game's going to change. I like that it changes. Uh, I'm an EVE diehard. So again, 11 and a half years, I've pumped a couple thousand dollars into this stupid game. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? So anyway, fleet fight, you get rid of the you get rid of any control. So if you're all about control, if you're like uh, I know a couple times you guys brought in Arazu. Oh, we'll talk about that. I talked about the Arazu in chat, but I'll bring it up here. But if you're in a bunch of like Hugans or Munins or anything with control, and they're kind of Kaidi, usually control means Kaidi, not always. Um, you don't want anybody putting control on your control. Um, you, it's just like in a, you know, if you're robbing a bank, you really don't want to hand the teller the gun while you grab the money. It's kind of a dumb thing. So, you know, you primary tackle and then uh, any E-war that you can, and then you kind of move on to reps. If you can't punch through the reps, if you can punch through the reps, you just ignore the, the yes. logic. But if you, can, if you can't punch through the logi, then you shoot the logi and hope you can, and you break the logi chain. A uh, pretty standard doctrine. I'm sure you guys know about that. You guys brought in a Razu and a Lachesis trying to catch my Tengu or my Moa once. Anyway, um, somebody got a warp in and they decloaked like 20 off. They were being a little risk adverse and maybe just didn't know. But in a cloaky situation, so I'm aligned to a Citadel. Anybody's aligned to a Citadel. If you're trying to get tackle on somebody that's aligned and you're trying to do it with a cloaky, get your warp in point warp in and you want to align so like if i'm aligned to a citadel just warp to the citadel and warp back at like you know 20 in front of me and then just burn right at me while you're cloaked because what we'll do is we'll slam into each other nose to nose you'll get decloaked and then you usually have like the six second targeting delay five second targeting delay but now i'm knocked out of alignment and so it's going to take me the six seconds to align while you lock me and boom i'm dead don't I mean, especially when you have a fleet and the ship's not big enough to kill you. Now, maybe if it was like a polarized material and I could one-shot you, maybe not the best idea to do in a Razu. Uh, but where you have an entire fleet behind you and I'm in a Moa or a Tengu, whatever, especially if it's a Tengu because I cost, you know, five times what you do, slam into me, face ram. I don't know. This is like nine and a half years of PvP. Just to be so, just to put us on parallel, I played this game for two years as a Care Bear. I uh, I set up an Abagawa near Jita. Um, I ran missions. I did a couple of anomalies back when they sucked so bad. It took like an hour. It didn't matter what the signature was. It took like an hour to probe. Anybody that old and remember that crap? The old probing interface. Um, it did. It took an hour. It didn't matter what it was. It took an hour to probe it. Anyway, I, every corp I joined had killed me. I remember uh, I remember taking my Raven, my mission Raven, one jump into a Korra to get a skill book. This is how dumb I was. I uh, went to go get like a, a $3 million skill book and a $450 million Raven because it was like Meadow 4 launchers back then and uh, promptly got killed. And they're like, hey, well, at least you didn't run away. You had a decent fit. You want to join our core? And so that's how it happened. So I joined their core and, and did something else stupid later. Somebody killed me. Hey, you did pretty good. You want to join our core? And blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, two years into the game, and I, that was even doing some zero zero PVP, but I, I sucked at it. Let's just be honest. There, it was fleet PVP and I sucked. Uh, but then I remember watching endless subversion and violator videos, uh, mind games, Drake 1, Drake 2, Drake 3. I can't remember the rest of them. Anyway, awesome videos back in the day. And I just remember seeing these guys like two on 20, one on three, you know, I saw a cyclone, the old cyclone take on a, a Megatron, a Myrmidon and a prophecy all at once. And I was like, wait, that's a thing. And so I started studying uh, YouTube videos and, um, and PVP videos off of e-files and uh, it just changed my life. I went from like 30 kills to like 
I think I broke a thousand kills in like six months. I just, uh, this is back in the battle cruiser era. I love the Drake super good mission boat, slap some hams on it. Didn't know you could do this. Like I stopped doing the, the passive recharge fit, just slap some buffer on it. Three ballistic controls back then it did 856 DPS overheated. I remember like every stat I knew exactly. I, I flew the Drake so much that I could tell the fit of the other battle cruiser by how much damage my missiles did. I would know in the first like five shots, whether or not I'd win the fight. Like I said, I ran so many missions. I I was like plus nine. So it is possible. There's, there's nothing stopping you. Uh, for me, it was a couple videos and I was just like, the veil was lifted from my eyes and I saw heaven in somebody else's lost mail. Any questions, uh, PVP, any questions, war, any specific questions? I still hate it because I'm a brawler. So my personal philosophy is it's a game. It's fun for me. I want to duke it out. I want to be like knights on chargers. The kitey thing, like if you go back in the day, nobody liked a bowman. If you go back not too long, nobody likes a sniper if you're fighting against them. So I'm more of a brawly guy. Most of my fits are AB. Most of my MWD fits are just to get into range so that I can brawl. I have very few truly kitey fights. So I hate it when I miss a tackle on a Garmer or a Slasher even, a Slicer, any of the kitey crap, Dram, and you just get worn down. I hate it twice as bad when I'm in a repy ship because then I feel obligated to go through all my charges and then the fight's like five minutes long and I can't get away. So I'm praying, praying for uh, an, an error, uh, praying that they think I have unlimited charges and they're going to just fly away, uh, third party, uh, any of that. So I really hate getting kited. Um, yeah, so too hard to hit. On the flip side, I like it. Like I love getting under guns. I like... Uh, you know, I like to win, just like everybody does. I'm, I'm not unique in that. But I like to feel like you get a fight. I don't really like to just win button people. I, I don't want... I'm kind of an Eve proselyter. I want you to enjoy the game. I preach it to everybody at work. Uh, random people on airplanes, like, they're getting Eve indoctrinated. I want people to like the game. So usually, I didn't do it during the war. I didn't think about it. I apologize. Uh, but usually, if you're a new bro, if you're less than a year old, I reimburse your fit. You know, if you lost a, a $5 million, usually I do $10 million, but um, just because I want people to, to get over that fear of loss because most games don't have loss and I want them to enjoy it. I, I want numbers. I want this to be, you know, wow level. If there were 10 million people logged in, I'd be ecstatic. Uh, Abram, so specifically your, uh, your Griffin pilot had some excellent target calling and some excellent RNG on his jams. We, uh, there were a couple of times he was clutch in breaking our cap change on our cap chain on our logi, and uh, he was just on point. I do collect corpses, but not really actively. I do have a small collection. Let me let me see real quick. So I have twenty. I only have a, like, yeah, I only I only have like forty or fifty corpses. Not and most of those are some of those I didn't even earn. I do have like Zarbox corpse, but that's easy to get. I have Kylie Bitkin's corpse again, easy to get. No, so I, I need to get I need to reward deck you guys just so I can get Urson's corpse because somebody promised me some money if I had an Urson corp. Yale never undocks. Like we got tired. We we stopped going to Stackmon because Yale never undocked. Or Ural or sorry, I don't know how. Let's see. Uh any other questions? Uh there's a there's a lot of little nuances. You don't have to be Chesser level featherer. Uh to be honest, 90% of the time I click approach. Uh, I almost never click keep it range. Uh, yeah, I should more. I'm, I'm, it's a good thing, uh, but I usually am in a rocket boat. So I click orbit. I'm like super lazy. It's not until I notice that, hey, whoa, this guy looks really good. Do I start uh, Do I start doing autopilot or uh, manual piloting? Do you guys know what slingshotting is? So slingshotting, it's super critical to move from both the defender and the attacker. So slingshotting is specifically when you are being kited what you want to do, uh, what, it, what it is, is you burn a different direction. And because of the server ticks, the other ship will approach you and hopefully get within range. You, you turn around in between ticks. First of all, server ticks. The server only updates commands once a second. One hertz. So that's what they call a tick. When you hit approach, orbit, or keep it range, those only update once a second. So what your ship is doing this second is dependent on what their ship was doing the last second. So if I'm approaching you this second and you hit orbit, say we're, say we're really close at, at 500 meters, 
and we're both ramming into each other, you hit orbit at 500. It's going to do the math at the, at the tick. It's going to do the math and says, okay, he's here. We're 500, so start orbiting. You know, here's the circle. Start drawing the circle. Well, at the same time, let's say I said keep it range at 1,000. At the same tick that yours calculating, hey, 500 orbit, mine's going to say, hey, we're at 500, pull range, another 500. And it's going to be based off that particular second, that, that millisecond, if you will. So the next one, so say I drift out to, we'll just say I drift out to 900. Okay. On the next tick, let's say I drift out to 1100 because that'll make more sense. The, on the next tick, yours is gonna, your ship's going to say, oh, look, he's too far. Burn directly at him to get within 500 and then orbit. Mine's going to say, oh, look, he, you're over 1,000. Burn back in a little bit and get it back within 1,000. Next tick, it's going to reference. And so it's, it's a snapshot in time, but it's always one second behind. Okay, back to slingshotting. Say the guy's at 20. He's got you kited. Stupid slasher, stupid garmer stupid whatever you're getting kited to death okay what you want to do is as he's pulling around to we'll say your aft end your butt your butt side you want to burn away with him you want to overheat your prop mod and burn almost directly away from him because you need a couple seconds so when he gets far away say he's got orbit 20 by the time it ticks and he's right on your aft it's now he's now drifted out to we'll say 24 okay as soon as you, you watch your overview, as soon as it starts to tick back in, okay, it says 23, you turn around and overheat again. You only have to overheat the first cycle usually. Uh, you'll, you'll get a feel for it. You turn around and overheat right at him. So what you're hoping to do is you overheat your web, you overheat your scram, and by the time he t by the time the server ticks again, you're hoping you're at within 13K, which is overheated web range, and it looks, oh, hey, his, you know, your machine – to say, hey, you're in web range, your web activates, and you keep burning straight at his face. His machine, oh, look, the dude's at 13, pull out to 20. By then, it starts to turn, his MWD's on, big target, MWD makes you the turn slowly, web hits him, boom, you coast into range, 1K, your blaster's melt him, and Cursus wins the day against a uh, slicer. That's defensive slingshotting, or offensive slingshotting, I guess would be. Because of the spacing and the lossiness of the commands, because it's, it only keeps track of one second in the past, you can actually catch a ship faster than you if you pilot in such a way. And there's a bunch of videos. I recommend you watch it. Practice it with some, some friends. Uh, if you got an alt, just tell your alt to orbit at 20 and just slingshot yourself. Uh, because then you can do it defensively. Say, uh, say I can't catch this guy and he's pretty cagey. So I burn at him and it drifts within the 14 not close enough for my web to fire and his machine and he overheats he's like, Oh crap, I'm going to get dead. And he overheats his micro warp drive. He's going to try to burn out to 20. Well, now that he's going too fast, he's going to coast out to 24 just on inertia because it only updates once a second. Well, as soon as he starts burning out, I punch it in 180 degrees in the exact opposite direction that he's burning out towards the celestial is the key point here. And as soon as he gets out to 24, his point kicks off and you warp. Boom, you're out, dude's faster than you, more skill points than you, better, whatever. Doesn't matter, you just warped out. Little, That's the old school no scope. That's what slingshotting is. Learn it, live it, love it. You will get more kills and you will avoid more deaths. Um, probably at lower skill points, you'll avoid more deaths, but then you'll get to more kills. Definitely worth learning to slingshot. Super critical. What are we round twoing? Is this my, yeah, my Legion lost you on a round two? Let's see, who all was in that? Oh, and... By the way, I think it was your oracle. That was a uh, that was a well well damage applying oracle, my friend. I'm still a little salty, can't lie. It was a hard fight. Uh, it was. I think we got some stuff. We just didn't get anything nearly that pricey as my sad. Little you got region. our suicide tackles. Yeah. Well, we started with tackling. I think I got caught. I did. I got caught off the uh, off gate, and you guys got me webbed or something. I think wasn't it off the hole? Oh no, the hole yeah. collapsed. Didn't the hole collapse a, on me? Uh, no, no. We threw a what scram web stabber at you. You did throw a scram, but the hole collapsed. I went to jump, and the hole was gone. It was gone because I was screaming on comms. I'm like, "Hey, vector in! I've got tackle, blah blah blah." Okay, I'm going to jump, and there was no hole. Oh, CCP, please. So we can, we can redo that. I actually, uh, I had another Legion that I went and got because I was also in the wrong clone, but uh, 
Uh, another thing, clones. Um, you do not have to go bling. There are plenty of people, well, I shouldn't say plenty, about half the people in Black Rise don't have clones. You'll quickly learn. That's the other thing. The longer you stay in a region, uh, the more you get to know who's doing what. Like, if you go to Black Rise, avoid St. Lucifer and his 9,000 overpriced alts. Uh, all, all the pros in Black Rise don't even bother with him. Uh, Destropia always has a snake clone in, and you'll never catch him. He's really good. You'll never catch him. Mr. Chunky always sits 20k off the hoe. Captain, well, actually, I've killed a Captain Blast the hoe, but yeah, same same idea. Seven sins, they're gonna drop a Sino. They'll drop a mom on your your hook bill. Uh, Mr. Chunky, kind of a weird guy, but he'll sit 20k off the beacon with a Ray O'Dellar Devil, 90% web. You'll never get in range. Just just avoid it. If you if you set up first, you might catch him, but don't ever warp into a plex against his Daredevil. Just not gonna work. Uh, so I know Black Rise really. Mal, Mal Kazowski has a 400 mil hook bill that's nigh unkillable. Super cagey, super hard to catch, and then super hard to punch through when you do catch it. Sir Yag always flies the Atron and the Dram. Super good guy. Never blob you. He just flies. I think he's lost like 900 of them. So he knows the Atron forwards, backwards. He knows everything. Um, you can still kill him. But just be, you know, you so you get a feel for a region. It doesn't matter where you go, you get a feel for the locals, you get a feel for who to avoid. But anyway, back to implants. Some of them are super cheap. I know you guys are, are told, uh, like learning implants, super help, helpful, get you an SP. Plus one CPU implants, plus one power grid implants, uh, plus one rate of fire implants. So if you have a fight that, so plus one rate of fire is 1.25, 1.33 damage percent damage because of the way rate of fire is calculated um you gotta remember over if if that's one percent damage over 30 seconds or 45 seconds it adds up all those little skills so like i when i used to tell people to train i would go through my sk skill queue and i would have them prioritize like if you're going to get five percent for one day of training or two percent for one day of training i recommend you train the five percent one day of training because all those little percents uh, add up. I have thermal dynamics five. I can overheat five percent longer than most people. It's super handy. If I can get ten percent more damage five percent longer, it adds up. Same thing with implants. If you can afford to drop in, some of the implants are like a hundred k. I mean, you can warp to a belt, shoot a rat. You can warp to a den or a refuge or whatever, shoot two rats, and afford a one percent rate of fire. Uh, one one percent. Uh, well, they're both rate of fires, the nine slot and the 10 slot, depending if it's missiles or uh, turret. The problem with the fleet of griffins is if you all jam me, I can still target all of you. So they changed that. So you, so bringing less griffins is actually uh, pretty decent. But um, yes, I probably would not be able to sleep at night. But I do have, uh, so just for that, uh, anybody remember when the griffin navy issues were super popular, the polarized griffin navy issues? But you put a, a multispectral jam on it, uh, a medium ancillary, and then polarized blasters. The idea being that you land, scram, jam them. If you don't jam them, you've got a little bit of extra rep to give you life. And then your blasters on a non-blaster boat were still doing like 200 DPS. So it was, uh, it was super painful. So if you fly a lot of, uh, like you fly a solo griffin, pre-nerf and whatever, I would drop one of those on you. I just go fit two ECCMs, wait for uh, wait for the Navy Griffin to land on me. Think he's got easy launch. He'd never catch a jam, and I'd delete his face. The most unexpected ship build you saw in the war. Um, actually, because I use your guys' website a lot, so I, I have a lot of respect for Eve Uni. I send people to your website. Um, so usually new bros, I send them to Eve. Eve is easy and Eve University, uh, either to join or at least read the forums. And so I've, I've trolled through most of your fits. Uh, my boy only has like five mil SP. Um, so I actually, most of the stuff wasn't too surprising. Uh, the RNG though, how lucky that Griffin pilot got. Uh, and the fact that you guys undocked a lot of T2, actually, I was surprised to see in Arazu, uh, I saw Lachesis, the Legion, uh, Balgorn. You guys, you guys dropped uh, some heavier and some pricier metal than I had expected. Oh, speaking of which, overplaying your hand. Uh, retribution. Um, 
the retribution, the reason I R uh, SRP'd you, Vasily, is because I knew, I was pretty sure, especially after the first one, that you couldn't kill me, and it was a skill, a real-world skill, and a skill level thing. I knew that I could get you, especially if you landed at zero, which is why I told you the first time, after I killed you, don't land at zero, and then you landed at zero the second time and let me kill you again. So some, th that's a perfect example. He had a Kaidi Retribution, T2, and he landed at zero on a T1 frigate, but because he had given up half of his ship's ability, which is the Kaidi part, he built around kiting, uh, staying at range, he lost half of his ship. And the uh, T2 minus one is T1. I mean, that's crappy math, yes, I know, but for this, for this point, that's what happened. And he lost a retribution twice to a, a breacher. T2, a meta, I'll show you the breacher fit right here. He lost to that breacher. There's nothing special about it. Turlo, sometimes you can do that. So if you get really good at a ship, there's the famous guy during uh, E Vegas and FanFest who talks about he had to fit his Megathron as a harpy. His FC, yeah, you can bring a Megathron to whatever you want because that was the only ship he really liked. He's like, as long as it behaves, performs, and whatever. So he took a, a Megathron and fit like 6 billion to it to make it perform like a 60 mil. Uh, to make it perform like a 60 mil assault frigate. So whatever. You can do whatever you want. Uh, rockets, rockets are over blasters only because of application. Sorry, let me turn this down a little bit. Yeah, the, the MJD, the no scope, super handy. Uh, pro tip on the MJD, if you can lock them at 100, you do not lose lock while you MJD. So you line up, get a lock on them, no scope, and then hit your scram. You will land at zero, scram them, web them, boom, no scope. Out of scram range, it's much harder. So in a, if you're scrammed, so like if you have a scram and it's kind of a little rock, paper, scissors. Let's assume you both have A, B, and scram. So you, you slam into each other nose first. You both scram each other. It comes down to who ships faster, who overheats sooner, usually. You burn straight away, and that's that's how you, you don't really slingshot when you're both in scram range. Uh, there are certain tricks. Uh, a lot of times I'll prioritize fitting a T2 scram over a T2 web. The reason being is if I'm trying to escape from somebody that's out DPSing me, but he's got a micro uh, warp drive, I can overheat the T2 scram out to 10K and I can coast out while his meta scram turns off and I can warp right before he can turn back on his micro warp drive and coast back into range. Does that make sense? Uh, and then you have to add in the web. So like AB scram beats uh, scram and micro warp drive, obviously. Uh, scram web beats scram AB. Little rock, paper, scissors, but you get it. I believe you were talking about not overplaying your hand. Oh, yes, yes. You guys had an easy golem kill, and then you overplayed your hand. So I had my Tengu out, and you guys had a couple battleships, and I was like, okay, this is fun. And then you guys got a little bit heavier, and so I was like, well, I'm going to switch up because I just bought this stupid blingy boat, and I want to play in it. So I undocked the golem, and you guys yeah, I undocked, and I, I know I know you guys uh, flee and forming up and herding cats and all that. So, I mean, a grain of salt. But all of a sudden on field, I saw, I knew there was a pilgrim, which is why I docked the Tengu, because that pilgrim, I, I waited. I didn't attack anybody, because I was trying to see if my, my cap regen was greater than the pilgrim, and it wasn't. So I docked it. I was like, oh, I'll pull out something bigger. I pulled out the golem. And then you guys showed me that you had the Pilgrim, the Armageddon, which is a new boat, and the Balgorn, which is a bonus to new boat. And that's why I docked. I mean, I sat there, let you shoot at me, and I wanted to see how many newts you had, and you guys murdered my cap in like 25 seconds. So I had to dock, and there was no way. And one of your FC, I think it was Urson, was a little mad uh, because you guys, I, I blue balled the fleet because I couldn't take it. I mean, that, there, that wasn't even, that was just a whelp. There was no way I could kill anything because you guys also had Logi and you guys would have just murdered four and a half billion for, you know, I might've killed a stabber or something. Yeah, so, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's, it's during war, it's your home system. Uh, bringing the hammer is fine, but there's a time to, you know, use a little bit of carrot and then hit him over the head with a stick. If you guys had left the Balgorn docked, 
And like, especially the battleground and the Armageddon, because that's what scared me. Everything else on field, I knew I could tank. I knew I could out rep. I knew I could cap inject. If you guys had waited until I engaged and warped those like right on top of me, I'm pretty sure you could have neutered and killed me before I could have de-aggressed. Because you got to remember, uh, on the Golem, it has the Bastion module, which has the 60 second timer. So I'm locked in space. If those things warped me and land, one second in, I have 59 seconds before I can do anything, plus the aggression timer. So a little overplaying the hand. Uh, so if you're like doing duos, sometimes you don't want to park both people in. You might want to do in, in like a plex. You might want to do what's a tanking game. Put the bait punisher in. Yeah, it's bait. Everybody knows. You might want to do like bait something else. Um, and then put the other one more than one AU away or 14 AU. You got you to remember, frigate warps pretty fast. And so you can actually get some timing down. So you hit, like you set it to 0.2 AU, uh, and the guy inside the plex is spamming his uh, scanner. Okay, scan, 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 scan. Okay, slice around scan or whatever. You know, something to kill on scan. Well, you can count. Okay, if it's on scan at 2 AU, it's going to take 10 seconds to come out of warp. Assuming he crashes gate, he, he immediately activates the gate, he's going to be in warp for another 15 seconds and then three seconds to lock you before he starts applying damage. So if you add that up, you have almost a full 30 seconds. A frig warps at 3 AU a second. You can be 15 AU away, and as soon as he shows up on D-scan, if your secondary, your, your gank frigate, the DPS frigate versus the bait, which is the tank frigate, tank and gank, now you get it, uh, you can warp, and you can either force him in, Hopefully he's like sitting on the gate. Maybe he's looting a wreck or whatever. You can tackle him and kill him. You can, you know, scare him in. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'd rather fight the bait punisher versus the gank comet or whatever, you know, inside. Maybe I can get away from the punisher. You force him in, and then you can land. Or he's already warped. Whatever your bait is has tackle. You warp the other one. And boom. So you don't. That's that's an example of not overplaying your hand. You don't want to park. Nobody nobody's gonna go fight two worms in a novice. You can't warp enough stuff in and get your, you know, even with reps, you can't get enough stuff repping before two worms are going to melt your face in and off. So you don't want to overplay your hand. You want to send in the bait punisher, which don't use a punisher. Everybody knows it's bait. There's like one in the whole game that's not bait. Um, so that's an example. Like if you had, I might have taken the arm again, probably not because it was a brand new purchase. I, I really didn't want to lose it, so that's just personal. But if you'd left the Balgorn and the Armageddon docked um, and waited until I engaged and waited until I sieged, you guys easily would have dunked that golem and there would have been much wailing and gnashing of teeth. Actually, I'll shoot, even if I know it's bait, so there's a guy in Okamon, uh, Captain Reynolds, and he has an alt wild thing, always in a bait punisher. Um, I'll actually go in because I have a polarized daredevil that is like 660 DPS. I'll warp in and try to melt the Punisher before he lights because he's got to warp from the Citadel, get out of warp, lock me up. And so sometimes I can melt the Punisher on purpose. So it's actually less safe sometimes. And if I know, like if I'm flying around with three people or four people and I see a Punisher in a knob or even better, a Punisher in a small, I will take that bait because I'm bait. You don't know I'm bait. You think you're getting a solo kill. Your two friends warp in, and my three friends are behind your two friends. And now it's a big old cluster of kill mails in the small. Yeah, sorry about the salt. But again, so the salt comes down to the, the docking. I wasn't trying to deny you fights. I was trying to divide, deny me loss. Because uh, replacing 4.5 billion by killing frigs and black rise is a long uphill battle. Long. Uh, loot. I keep all my loot, so you uh, circling back around to that. I keep anything I'm going to use. So, like, I'm not a big laser fan just because my skills suck. So, I sell all my laser stuff, except all the crystals. I, I literally have a billion dollars in laser crystals. In oh no, no, that's a lie. I have three hundred and like seventy-five million in laser crystals uh, because they don't repackage, so you can't sell them on the market. Um, anything I'm not going to use. Like, if you have no missile skills, sell all the missile stuff. But I save. Anything I'm going to use, I'm kind of a pack rat, so I oversave. But if I was just starting out and I'm flying Galente, not Master Race, uh, I would save all my blasters. You know, I would save the meta. I would save like the Meta Four and the T2 blasters, and I'd sell everything else. I'd save all the ammo, all the Navy ammo, sell everything else, uh, and do it that way. And that way, you you don't lose that five ten percent margin that Jita has because if you sell it for a hundred and you have to buy it again tomorrow for 105 because you can now buy a ship then you've lost money 
um, in the long run. So if you can afford to save the stuff you're going to use in the future, you don't have to be like super neurotic where I've, I have large guns that I am still not even training for. They're not even in my queue. So you don't have to be neurotic, but it is a quick way to actually make money in the long run. Uh, let me see this. Oh, the golden horde blaster fit. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the big one. Some people use the afterburner. I've even seen just the web. Um, that's not pure bait. Uh, a lot of times, pure bait won't even have a mag stab because you're not there. Just by scramming somebody, you're on the kill mail, so you don't need to do damage. Uh, also, wonderful thing with bait, if you can afford to, is putting newts on it. One nos usually to keep your your tackle on. And then the rest newts, because uh, nothing dies faster than a guy caught with, with no reps and no damage when the rest of the fleet lands. That's uh, it's always very sad when that happens to me. Uh, any other questions? So let me link a couple things. So I use that breacher. Funny thing is, I use your guys' name uh, because I want people to think I'm low low skill point player. So most of my fits are called EV and E Alpha fit. So hopefully people think I'm easy kill, warp into the plex and die. Uh, so I use that. <laughs> I, I misappropriate. It's not stealing, just misappropriation. So you can see that's a that's a low sec fit. It, it does really good. Damage application is great. You'll notice it's T two rockets uh, because if you have uh, two webs, rock, rage rockets apply great. If you only have one web, pro tip: if you only have one web on your frigate, don't grab rage ammo. Grab navy. Um, there is a big difference. There's like a 10% damage difference between T1 and Navy if you can afford it and stockpile the stuff. When you loot the field after this, stockpile that Navy ammo because it is worth it. 10% damage is 10% damage. Uh, also, another thing for getting kited. Uh, if you can't slingshot, if you'll notice, I have javelins, which I almost never use. They're specifically there for when the Tristan, the Slicer, the Garmer gets out of my range and I can't slingshot him. I load load javelin as soon as he gets out of my range i'm already reloading and trying to slingshot as soon as the slingshot wins i pump ammo into him as soon as it fails i pump ammo into him um because a lot of times their tank is so thin you can actually chase off a kiter with just pure dps um or they get scared like they have you dead to rights but they don't realize it they're scared of losing their ship they warp off you get to live another day i already showed you guys the breacher i'll show you the tengu um, it's a little pricey just because somebody asked. Those are all the mods like Kaldari and Dreadgrist and Ballistic Curls are exactly the same bonus. So it might not be exactly the same name. Uh, no cloak. I have a cloak. So the cool thing with the T3s is you can change mods and you can change uh, rigs. So I actually have a travel fit with the cloak. But this is the cloaking mod is the same as the shield boost mod so when i undock and i'm going to fight you know 15 people on a gate like i did i kind of want the reps uh, the cloak is good like i move around with the cloak i put things on and there are times i use the cloak especially in black rise because everybody and their grandma will drop a super on you for being in a tengu so i cloak up and i try not to use it and when i do use it i still get dropped on so i don't know why i even try i might as well just take the cloak off because i'm gonna die anyway there's a joke. There's a combat heron fit. If you want to, if you want to get people really salty before the assault frigate boost, uh, boost that's uh, the scare devil there. You can uh, pump out 660 DPS with implants and drugs, and you'll melt through any other frigate in the game. I used to farm 400 million dollar worms like four or five a day, and then CCP screwed me. The more Eve Uni fits. I, I like the hook bill. Five mids is a lot of power. Hook bill's pretty cheap. Uh, does really well. I I originally bought high grade slaves, so you'll see a lot of my stuff with rolled tungsten, uh, with armor. Uh, so I'm slow, but I have a huge amount of EHP. Um, they are not required. I've killed almost. I think I've killed every ship in slaves and out of slaves. So I don't think they do help. Don't get me wrong, 58% more armor hit points is a big deal, but they're not required. Again, like the Breacher, that same Breacher fit does amazing. You throw a, a, a 200k drug on it, it's great. If you can spend like the 3 mil and get the, the 7%, at 7% shield, 7% armor, you can sit there and beat people's face all day in the Breacher. Sir Yag's Atron, he has a gajillion, I don't know how many really, but he's, I think it's a couple thousand kills in the Atron. Super fast. The cool thing with the Atron is you can ram into him. Uh, Navy ammo might be a little better if you have lower skills, uh, just because it tracks better. But it's super fun. I mean, the Atron, you, it's two buttons. You, you, you click approach and you hit F1. You know what I mean? It's a <laughs> super low impact and you just ride it out. You know what I mean? You're either going to win or you're going to lose. Uh, I lied. It's, it's actually three buttons because you have to, four buttons. You have to 
hit approach, scram, guns, and then activate your rep when you need them. But yeah, it's mostly F1. So also, that's a, that's a good point. F1, boy. Uh, when you're starting out, do not go get one of those nightmare fits where every module on the ship is an active module. It's just because it's so much to manage. At first, you know, you want to start out with a small scale. Okay, approach, like the Atron's great. Hit approach, shoot him, scram him, rep him. Done. As you get better, you want to add more stuff in. The Kestrel's great. I, I line all my stuff up. It's F1 through 5. I, somebody lands on me, I, hit, I just roll my fingers, like roll my knuckles like on a piano. F1 through 5. It scrams him, double webs him, fires my guns, and turns on my AB. All I have to do is hit orbit and, ta uh, and target. Super easy. Uh, so as you get better, you can add more stuff in. Okay, now, now that I can tackle and hit F1, uh, by the way, I put my tackle on F1 because you don't want to web somebody first or shoot somebody and let them warp. All right, so I always put my scram first, so it's the first thing on so that it holds them down. But then work your way up. Okay, so I can, I can tackle, I can shoot, I can win. So now can I tackle, can I shoot, can I de-scan? Can I tackle, can I shoot, can I manual pilot? Can I tackle, can I shoot, can I, you know, run a jammer? Can I run, you know, a NOS? Can I add, yeah, can I run 16 active modules? So slowly, like, don't try to drop in and, and go watch a, a Chesser video and try to manually pilot, which they call feathering. That's what uh, Chesser calls it. It's where you click. He, you'll notice he'll click like 15 times a second. Which is funny because the only the last one in the queue works. Uh, the other thing, and don't be lazy in PvP. Click target until it starts targeting. Like I spam it. I don't spam my F1 because you can look. There's a there's a graphical feedback. But if you're trying to warp, spam warp. When your pod's about to pop out and you don't want to lose your pod, spam warp before you die. If you you know click a line because sometimes it doesn't get in the queue. There's this. Uh, if you've done any game programming, there's a queue of actions. And the more times you put it in there, the better chance you have of getting it. Uh, we all know that there are glitches in EVE. It is a very complicated piece of crap. So just queue up and make, make sure that your ship knows what you want it to do. But then don't overwhelm yourself. So slowly work up to it. Can I shoot? Can I tackle? Can I shoot? Can I tackle, shoot, de-scan? Can I tackle, shoot, you know, manual, whatever, whatever order it is for you. Get to know your ship. Get to know yourself. Again, if you watch EVE is easy, uh, Suetonia has a, he goes out with like level two and three skills. He didn't min-max it. He did all 20s and a 19 on his stats. He trained for 17 days, most of the stuff at two, three, or four. And he goes out and kills T2 ships in a, in a T1 rifter. And the rifter is not in a good place right now because he has real world skill. He's practiced it. He knows what he's doing. So try that. Let me look for a tormentor. Somebody after that's a rifter fit is super dumb because of the uh, slaves I had at the time. I almost never fly that. But it has hit points for days. I have one tormentor. So uh, caveat on this tormentor, I've never flown it but i believe i died to it which is why i have it saved um which is also why it has random crap in the cargo like you don't need rockets on a tormentor uh but there you go um if you're ever looking go uh if you're looking for a fit you can hit z kill type in the ship name and it'll show you all the losses and the kills and you can see people who have like great records you can go like if you go look type in tormentor and scroll down on the right side you'll see top pilots click on that pilot and go look at his losses and find a, a ship that works for you. Yeah, the battle tor the tormentor is actually pretty mean. There's a kitey one and a brawly one. This is obviously a little more brawly because of the pults. Tormentors are pretty pretty mean. Um, anyway, I think uh, I've talked all your guys ear off. Uh, if there's more questions, I'll answer them. Just as a caveat, you guys can reach out. Not any. I mean, you can reach out anytime. I don't always have the time, but if you want like a little skirmish. To be fair, I live near Asakai and Jita, so you guys are kind of far out, but uh, maybe I can put a clone over there. Uh, if you want, you know, a little dogfight and try to you know, practice some stuff, get with each other. You can call me if you if you need some finer points, if you don't understand some slang, some terminology, you watched a video that doesn't make sense. Again, I, I'm, I'm pro-Eve, so whatever makes your game more enjoyable, no, I will not just uh, wholesale whelp ships to you. Uh, I want it to be enjoyable, not stupid, uh, just in case anybody was going to ask that. Yes, I am mainly a brawler. Again, I like that fist of cuffs. You have a chance. I have a chance. Uh, best man win. Uh, that's actually one of the things I love about Eve. Eve has a lot of faults. Uh, Eve has a lot of great things. Kaidi for the win. You, you actually will kill more stuff, Kaidi, in the long run. You can engage larger numbers, Kaidi. Brawly, you're caught. You just have to throw money at it and be like the Gullum. There is a limit. I have a couple Brawly ships like the Hookbill, the first one, the AB. I can control stuff. And I've actually done a 3v1 uh, versus the Hookbill in that Hookbill in one. Uh, a lot of 2v1s. 
but with kitey you can engage those and you because you control the range and you can run away i hate to say it because i'm a brawly guy but you can engage bigger numbers survive longer at the beginning you will kill less stuff just because stuff is going to slingshot you or you're going to slingshot yourself until you get a fill for your ship uh but in the long run you will kill more stuff so if you go look at all the pro videos they're all kitey Oh, I hate saying that out loud. But anyway, so uh, the thing I like about Eve is that at the end of the day, it's my responsibility. If I die to the blob, it's because I let them catch me. If I slam into you and we're both in a T1 frigate and I win, it's because I trained harder. I have better skills. I did all of this stuff. If I lost, it's because I didn't have good enough skills. I didn't have enough. You know what I mean? It's really, I like it because I can't blame anybody else for my failings. So that's actually why I really love this game. It holds me accountable. If I lost that $4 billion golem, favorable RNG is less. Less likely and less... I have, I have died to bad RNG before. I, I was winning a fight. It was the drones. It was, I, was, I was doing like a 3v1. I was, I was getting it. And then like all the drones synced up and fired in the same tick. And I lost my ship. So, But that's happened like twice in in your guys's fight if all of your rapid lights had fired on the same tick i probably would have died but i didn't so rng does sometimes matter but i'll tell you it's it's not it's not blameable honestly blameable most of the time uh you can get out isked um like in the fight in black rise you guys had more people you had more uh more logi i think we were t2 fit so we probably had more isk but you know what i mean numbers I'll tell you where RNG gets me all the time is drops. When I die, I drop everything blingy. When I kill people, nothing blingy drops. No money for me. But yeah, as for fights, RNG, it, it usually comes down to uh, most people aren't going to be like crazy, uh, crazy OP. And I, I've killed blingy stuff. So I've killed the Drams and Daredevils in a, in a Kestrel T2 fit, and they were running Corelli A types or Republic Fleet this or multiple uh faction or dead space and so it's not always dollars i mean you can i out isked you guys i dropped four and a half billion and you guys dropped a fleet on my golem that was you know less than a bill <laughs> so in that case yes dollars work um but frigates also minimize that you can only throw so much isk at a normal frigate the other cool thing with frigates is you can only throw so much skill points at it i have 91 million skill points or something like that and only 20 million fit on a kestrel that's it you know what I mean? I, so I have, you know, only 20 mil fit on a cruiser, only 20 mil fit on a battleship. So um, you can you can go up against people who have 150 million skill points. If you're both T1 frigate and you both spend 10 mil, it's not, you know what I mean? So it, it's, there are times RNG and money will beat you, but most of the time it's, it's your responsibility. Just like it's my responsibility. If I die, I probably screwed up. Last, any other last minute questions now that I've talked? Again, if you if you want to have a little skirmish session or you want to shoot me an email, uh, email, whatever, uh, go ahead. I'll, I'll happily answer your question. I'm not the fastest because my playtime is random. Uh, there is a lot to absorb. I'm 11 and a half years in. I'm still learning stuff. Uh, I'm still even learning stuff about PvP, and then they keep changing stuff. So, yeah, random playtime suck. I, I, I went and bought a bunch of stuff. I, I bought a camera. I got backdrops from E Vegas, so my room looks super cool. And I can never log into stream. I wanted to start streaming, but you can't have a ran you can't have a uh, stream schedule when you randomly log in and sometimes don't log in for a week at a time. But yeah, so short story, it's a game. Have fun. Go out there, try it. PvP, it's just ships. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, you can go panhandle in Jita. You can go out there and hey, can I? You know, all the time. I even do it. I mean, I SRP'd your guys' uh, stuff. I paid somebody a hundred mil to fight me. Oh, I appreciate it. I, you know what's funny is. All those fights, I forgot to record every one of them. Forgot to record every single fight against you guys. And at the end of the fight, I'm sweating. My hands are shaking. And I turn to my boy and I'm like, I forgot to record. Yeah, I forgot every one of them. Uh, SRP is Ship Replacement Program. So a lot of big alliances, I know you guys, I think you guys do it on ops. Uh, RVB does it when we do ops. So like Vaselli, sorry if I butcher everybody's name, I apologize. But he fought me in two retributions. I told him I'd SRP it. So he he fought me in two $84 million ships. He got $84 million back twice. So usually, especially like I said, if you're under a year old, I try to, when I'm out roaming around Black Rise, I try not to, try not to add extra salt to the game. There's plenty of salt already in space. But you'll find, uh, you'll find, 
of big alliances, sometimes you can get out, like they have a corp level SRP. So if you go out on a fleet op and you're trying to take over zero zero whatever, and you lose your ship, the corp will pay you the ship price. And then the alliance also pays the ship price. So for every ship you you lose, you're, you're making double back. So uh, SRP can it, it's a big recruiting tool, and it's really nice when you have you know ca- uh, lossless PvP. But also, those are a bunch of F1 monkeys. So I think you, you guys do that on ops, don't you? Don't you have uh, free ships? Like the ship doesn't cost you anything. You grab it out of the corp hangar or whatever to go do fleets and stuff. Yeah, same idea. That's like pre SRP'd, uh, just a, you know fleet doctrine, free fleet ships. Uh, some of the ships, like the, all the caracals. Uh, when we sw- when we switched to caracals, somebody brought those. One of our FCs brought a, a bow head full of caracals, and we just shot you. So it didn't cost me anything to lose those, which I didn't. Oddly enough, I didn't lose any of the fleet ships. I lost my personal ships, and then I gave the fleet ships away because I'm lazy and I don't have a bow head, and I didn't want to move a bunch of ships. You guys needed to kill me more. I was super sad that I had to give away ships. Well, you can un three letter it. Just remember, it's free ship program. Everybody loves free spaceships, right? Yeah, I even love like I, I still fall for scams in Jita trying to get something for free. I'm better at it now. It's very rare, but I still fall for stuff every once in a while. I was collecting scams actually for a, a large part of my Eve career. I was collecting scams in Jita just to to see all the different ones. And a lot of people do it. Like a lot of people do PvP on the weekends, or you know, I know Eve Uni does fleets because I I should get shot by them and shoot at them all the time in Black Rise. Oddly enough, I should stop because you guys keep winning those fights. You can go oh Saturday night op and the rest of the rest of the week PvP, and you don't have to you don't have to dedicate your whole budget. Where's my home base? I actually I told you I live in Asakai, so uh, RVB home space is in Yosemite, right there. That's actually all three systems we we parade through, and that's the station I I fly out of usually in Black Rise. That's in Low Sec. If I, I'll take a one v one anytime. Uh, if you, if a couple of you are underskilled in two v one, three v one. Uh, you don't want to camp Asakai. It's uh, a couple people have moved in. You you got to be on your toes. It's not super bad, um, but you don't want to just sit on the undock. Uh, Seven Sins, uh, Snuff's been flying through there. Uh, Weekend Warriors. There's there's a couple. And there's a couple of people. You guys, Calcif, the Caldari one, Faction Warfare, and the Galantic Faction Warfare. They come through. So you can actually get a lot of good fleet stuff right now because uh, Asakai Okamon's pumped back up. But you can still get a lot of solo stuff. People come through. Black Rise is cool because it's four jumps. If you want to go through Tama, don't. Uh, it's four jumps from Jita, so you can get there. Yeah. Other trick, if you're trying to get in and you don't want to go the long way around, uh, two-second alignment time. Everybody know what alignment is, how long it takes your shift to turn. Uh, alignment time is usually measured in uh, how long it takes to do a 180 from a complete stop. If you put enough eye stabs, inertial stabilizers, in your lows, you can... Uh, turn fast enough and warp before most people can lock you so if you get your alignment time in the fitting window below two seconds you can actually go into tama the short route so anyway that's another little quick tip i don't know there's a whole bunch of stuff i mean there's there's literally books been written on pvp crashing the gate is another good one you guys know how to crash the gate i use it ambiguously but normally it's a if you jump in and there's a gate camp you hit approach, overheat your prop mod, and tap it, and you burn back to the gate and jump. Don't engage. Uh, crashing the gate. You can do the same thing. There's a cool trick you can do with your cloak. You hit a line or warp, and you click your cloak and your MWD at the same time. And because your MWD fires first inside the tick, you know, a microsecond earlier in the in the order, you'll actually get a full cycle of MWD wall cloaked, and you can coast out of bubbles and zero zero, crash through gate camps, blah blah blah. Um, you guys know about tax. You guys don't run blingy pods, but yeah, tax are great to avoid smart bombs, which are very common in Black Rise zero zero stuff like that. P- uh, bubbles crashing the gate will save you. Uh, tacticals uh, bookmarks above gates and bubbles and stuff like that. Uh, sorry, tax is short for tacticals. Wormhole, same thing. You can set up around the wormhole. You can crash the wormhole. Uh, you used to start closer, but now the wormhole, you you spawn farther away from it. So if you jump in and there's a bubble and a, a you know big oracle fleet, you just crash the, crash the hole. Uh, same thing. You hit approach, overheat, tap it as fast as you can. Even if they web scram you, hopefully you'll coast back to the hole, hit jump, and go about your merry way somewhere else. Tacticals. You guys know them as bookmarks. I, I don't know if you guys also use the word tacticals, but you can do a lot of wicked stuff with tacticals. 
yeah, avoiding bubbles and zero zero is the biggest one. And that translates to avoiding smart bombing Proteuses and Mercurios and Losec. You warp like in Tama, you don't warp directly to the notification gate because it's always camped with moms and battleships and all sorts of nasty stuff. You warp to a tag, yeah, exactly. You warp to attack above it or behind it, and then you warp through because the smart bombing battleship's not gonna be in the front, it's gonna be behind. Uh, yes, they are a pain to set up. Uh, zero zero, they're critical though. Uh, low sec, they're less so, but they they come in handy. I have a couple between Tom and Asakai. I have much attacks where I can warp around and catch people out of position. Uh, does everybody know the difference between optimal and fall off? Optimal is is how far out your guns do 100% damage. Fall off is how far out your guns can hit, but take a percentage hit. So if you're 50% into fall off, you do 50% of your full DPS, minus things like wrecking shots and all that RNG stuff. Fall off is added to optimal. So if you have an optimal of 10 and a fall off of 20, you actually have a 30k range. But at 30k, you're doing like 1% damage. That's not a, that's not exactly right, but for easy math, we'll go with that. It's close anyway. You can either abuse fall off or or use use your optimal. So like in an Atron. So like blasters. Blasters have almost no fall off. Uh, you can get a little hits in, but you want to be an optimal with blasters. Um, like the Atron fit I linked, I think it has an optimal of like six. 0.6k. You got to be 600 no, what meters. I meant so you want to be right if, up. If your optimal is 10k, for example, calling that optimal to me sounds like that is the best range to be shooting at, and closer is not as good. But it doesn't mean that, does it? It actually does. So you are 50% correct. So in short range guns, guns, not missiles, guns, if you are a blaster, not a rail gun, you want to be at or under that optimal pending some edge cases like uh, SIG tanking and whatever, uh, which is signature tanking, we'll, we can go cover that. But for long range, it actually does matter. So you've heard the term, get under your guns. If you're shooting at me, like I did it with the Talos. I got in with, I think I've got in with a frigate on one of them and got so close that I was able to orbit and his guns can't track. I was under his optimal because he's a long range variant. A short range, you want to be optimal or less. Long range, you want to be at optimal. Anything less is suboptimal as it, yes, under, under an Eve means close. So yeah, so if you get, so it's uh, under the gun, SIG tanking, uh, kind of the same thing. So say I'm in this, H, the Atron I fit with the AB. If I land on a snipey tornado or a snipey Talos, long range uh, variants, if I orbit at 500 and keep my afterburner on, A, my afterburner will keep me moving faster than his, his guns. And B, I'm under his optimal, and I'm a small target. Those three things together, he can't hit me. I will take zero damage from a tornado, uh, an art artillery tornado, at zero. If I'm if I'm orbiting at 500 with an AB on, I will take zero damage, and I can just wear him down. Um, obviously, that does not work against auto cannons. That's exactly the opposite. So versus auto cannons, I have to purely speed tank or sig tank. I got to go faster and be smaller than his guns can hit because they're the short range for. I can't get under them in 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 exactly the same way uh, i hope that's not too ambiguous unfortunately eve has a lot of words sig tanking is done small so uh if you go look at a micro warp drive and you look it says 500 percent signature bonus so when you're in a frigate and you turn your micro warp drive on you're as big as a cruiser big as a battle cruiser much faster to target much easier to hit much easier to track so there are ships if you know some of the interceptors have a signature bonus where they actually look smaller the ships actually look 50 meters but on overview they only show up as 38 meters uh there are implants the trick is, is uh you'll see like the the uh, dual prop like the dual pop dram dual prop garmer uh dual prop stiletto stuff like that you burn in with your mwd and as soon as you get in you might take a hit on the way in hopefully not and as soon as you get under like 10k you get a scram range you turn off your micro warp drive turn on your afterburner now you're you're 500 percent smaller than you were a tick ago and now you, you know so your signature is now a 38 and and basically it'll take him 20 seconds to target you and his guns will never hit you we got a little bit away from it but so you can you can get out of range so we'll use the sticking with the atron it has a blaster range of like 0.6 and a fall off of like two so theoretically i can't hit above three and i can tell you that that's true if, if i load void and, and you land in a breacher and you orbit me at 6k, I will do zero damage in an Atron until I change ammo. 
And even when I change to null, it has like a max range of eight and half of that's fall off. So I'm only doing 50% of what the fitting window says with my null, null ammo fitted. Um, so that's, ab that's abusing. So like if you're in a breacher, uh, your optimal is longer with its rockets. Uh, breacher has a max skills like an 8K range. And my short range, and that's your short range ammo, my short range ammo has a max range of like 2K and, and most of that's fall off. You can sit at 6K and just abuse me all day and I will do no damage to you. And then I'll do half damage when I reload. Uh, you've heard of the term scram kiting. What you do is you want to stay right at the edge of your scram, and that's what you're doing is you're abusing your optimal or your fall off versus a shorter range target. So Kestrel, a dual web Kestrel versus an Atron. A dual web Kestrel A has two webs, so you're not moving. I do full damage with Rage, and Rage rockets with the Kestrel bonus reaches out to 12K. Again, the Atron reaches out to three. So I hit, I actually overheat my scram and hit orbit and I preset my orbit to 8,000 because it'll orbit right around 85, right, right where the overheated scram will cut off and I'll orbit you and I'll take zero, like a legitimate zero damage from an Atron. That's called scram kiting and that's abusing my longer, even though they're both short range weapons, I have a longer optimal or a longer fall off um, than the Atron does. Same thing with the Rifter. The Rifter gets, artillery has a longer fall off than blasters do. So a auto cannon Rifter versus the same Atron, we'll say the same Atron. Again, 3K is the max for, for Void. A Rifter can reload to Barrage, which is probably a little overkill, but I would reload to Republic Fleet Fusion. And now my optimal is only 1K, so it's about the same as the Atron, but I get a fall off bonus. So my fall off goes out to like 9K or 10K or whatever. So I can orbit, same orbit, I can orbit at six, seven, eight K in a Rifter, even though we're both short range because the Rifter has a fall off bonus. I'm only doing 50% of my damage, but 50% of my damage is greater than 0% of his damage. So you can kite out and take no damage in a Rifter versus an Atron until he reloads and then he's only doing half damage, blah, blah, blah. Um, when you encounter ship, how do you know if it's Brawly or Kaidi before you engage? Uh, you can look at it. So they changed all the ship models, the, the gun models, so you should get to know them a little bit, at least in the class you're fighting. What I do, though, is uh, if you go to the E menu, the Neocom menu, go to Accessories and then Logs, it'll pop up the Combat Log window. And if you hit the gear, you can go down and it says Show Weapon Type. Click that checkbox. So what I do is... If I land on you, say whatever scenario, I land on a rifter. I don't know if it's artillery. I don't know if it's auto cannons. I'm going to tackle and I'm going to try to get to my optimal first. Okay. Actually, let's do uh, let's do an Atron because it could be snipey, could be short, and it's it's a bigger gap between blasters and rails. Um, so I'm going to hit 8K. If I look at the damage notification, as soon as he tackles me and shoots me, if it says he hits with rails. I'm going to right click on him and choose orbit at 500 and overheat my MWD. I'm going to stop overheating my scram, overheat my, sorry, afterburner, because that's what I usually use, and burn into 5K and get under his guns. Yes, a frigate can get under a frigate's guns. If you burn in a, a beam slicer, a rail uh, comet, a rail or an artillery rifter, if you burn into 500, keep your AB on and just orbit 500, those ships will stop scratching you. Same thing, if you catch a short range block, Bow, like an Atron and Arcursus, and orbit out at 6, 7, 8K, they'll never hit you. Um, I, yeah, you should, I just find out by engaging, and there's kind of a flavor of the month. Uh, the, the Comet does really well with blasters. Most people in, zero, in low sec fly it with blasters. Uh, sometimes I have to change up, but 80% of the time it's going to be blasters, so I know that my preset orbit's going to be good enough. So part of it, yeah, you can look in the ship by zooming, but what if they're in a plex? What if you just land on them? Uh, usually the, the ship's all shaking and you're trying to come out of warp and overheat your stuff. It's, it's not always perfect to look at engaging. If you're going to, like it's a fleet fight or you have time, then yeah, definitely zoom in, pull them up on Z kill. Like if all they fly is brawly, kite those bastards to death. Um, but you don't always have the time. And I try to set it up where, again, I, I'm lazy. If you click on a ship and then hit uh, look at, it'll zoom in on their ship and then you have the same controls like around your ship and you can look at the, the gun models and each model is different. Um, you'll learn them. There's a couple websites that you can go, a couple videos, but you can learn them. Just like undock, look at your ship. You don't even have to undock. You can do it in station and see how the guns look different. 
yeah, you can actually see the difference. Uh, same thing with dreadnoughts. Like if you're going to go fight in a capital ship, you can tell if a dread is sieged or not because its guns will be sticking out the big portholes on the side. Uh, you can see the difference. But anyway, so I, I try to pick fits that I can be lazy in that have a good chance of winning. Favorite way to break tackles is, is sling. you have to slingshot. Like it's a critical skill. If you, after you learn how to hit F1, you should go learn how to slingshot. It's, uh, it's that critical. Because that's the, the only way to break tackles. So you can, if you have a newt, you can try to newt off the tackle. Um, but that's only if you have a fit. So the only consistent way across every single ship is slingshot. Um, but anyway, so I try to pick fits that I don't have to be like super neurotic about. I try to pick fights that I don't have to be super neurotic about. So again, so take the Comet. Everybody loves the Comet. It's not Kaidi. It's a good, it's a good brawler. It's the brawly version of the slicer, basically. Um, so a lot of people fly it. It's pretty low SP. It has a good return on investment. It's cheap. Uh, and everybody fits blasters because who doesn't like to brawl? Let's be at the end of the day, you know, kiting wins fights, but brawling looks cool. So a lot of people like to brawl. So I know that if I go in against the comet, it's gonna be at zero. I'm gonna to need to overheat my A B and orbit at eight thousand. He's gonna hit me. He's going to get me to half armor. By then, I'm at 8,000, and he's going to stop doing damage except with his drones, and then I just wear him down. <laughs> going backwards. I try not to brawl in real life. It's painful. Um, I don't try to, but with my size, um, if things like that happen, <clears throat> I get in close because then I can cream them. Oh, yeah. Are you, uh, are you a smaller, smaller guy? No, I'm 6'4", 275. Oh, okay. So I like to grapple. I'm 6'4". Uh, I'm actually a little lighter than that. Just hit 260, unfortunately. Thank you, Christmas season. Uh, so yeah, similar thing. I, I'll, I'll just grab you and take you to the floor. None yeah, of that rope yeah, but, but in crap. games, I like to snipe. I, everybody has to think. So find a flavor. Don't, don't fly something because somebody else told you to. Fly something that fits your personality. Uh, find, find something that's fine. And I switch up. Mostly Brawly. I have a few Kitey. Um... But then the, the trick is, is, as you get more comfortable with your stuff, like I said, I'll look and my damage note, I keep them right default, right in the middle of the screen. And so as soon as I hit tackle and I know my guns are firing, I look up and I look for a damage notification. Is he, is he got nudes? Is he got rails? Is he got, you know, short? Is it long? Uh, and I, I react accordingly. But like in my fights, if you count all the actual moves, so I, I say I'm doing the setup, like I was talking earlier. So I get on the beacon. So that's one click. So I'm on the beacon. I overheat everything, not really a click. As soon as they come out of war, I hit approach. I hit control C to target, and I'll keep spamming control C until they target. As soon as it starts, tar I hit all of my buttons, all one through five. So there's, uh, so we hit, a, so we have approach, we have approach, we have target, uh, and then I have all my stuff, which is five. So I'm at eight clicks. I mean, I click a lot more than that, but it's eight clicks, and then I only have to right click and click if their guns are different. So if it's a rail comet and I have to burn in close, I right click hit orbit 500 and I'll, my AB is probably still heated. So I'll just leave that on it and I'll shift click on my scram and unoverheat it. And that's it. I'll just go the rest of the fight. There's nothing I can do. It's already engaged. He's got me tackled. I got him tackled. Uh, we're just waiting for the dice gods to figure out who wins, uh, which isn't true, but it sounds good. Uh, we're just looking to see who has the better skills, who applies. Um, so I try to set it up to be lazy. Um, if you want to be super complicated and all that fun stuff, you go ahead. It's your game. You're paying for it. Um, so, but it is reaction time. A lot of times, the, especially in frig fights, because they're so short, the first one to react, the first one to pay attention. Um, you'll see frig fights lost all the time because breachers and comets forget to drop their drones. Right. Yeah. That's a habit you have to break. If uh, yeah, so you'll you'll get to, and you'll notice uh, another good thing to do if you really want to get hardcore with the PvP or at least get comfortable is record it. Just download OBS; it's free. Uh, carve off a little partition, record some, record a couple of uh, PvP fights, and then look back and look at open source broadcasting studio, whatever the crap is for Twitch. That's what OBS. But uh, any free recording software. If you have an N a new NVIDIA card, it's built in. Uh, Shadow Play. If uh, OBS has it, if you want to use. When I think Windows has screen capture now. I don't even know. There's a whole bunch of crap. If you're uh, crappy like me and use a Mac, they have it built in too. Anyway, and then go back and look at it. Like zoom in and look at your module management. Oh, look, hey, we were 
10 seconds into the fight before I forgot to scram him or, Hey, look, I never dropped my drones or I'm shooting explosive ammo against the shield ship and wasting 60% of my DPS. Um, you'll go back through and then you'd be like, and, and it's, I mean, you're learning from yourself. You, I mean, you're your own best teacher. If you, if you pay attention, I'm trying to think of other, other, so there's just so much to it. There's so many little nuances. There's a few things, slingshotting, uh, picking the right ammo. You get a feel for that. Like if you know, it's an armor ship, uh, nobody fits a shield, uh, a shield comet. So load, if you have the choice, load explosive ammo. I mean, that should be, uh, that should be your first thing. Uh, it's kind of true. And again, you'll get a feel for it. Again, if it's a Punisher, there's no shield Punishers. First of all, Amar boats have no mid slots. So you know none of them are shield. So you know they're all armor. So you should load explosive ammo if you have that choice, which is uh, Minmatar and Kaldari have that choice. So it's little things like that. If you're a kiter, have your long range ammo. Don't leave home without it. If you're in a slow boat, bring some long range ammo to chase off the kiters. Don't forget to bring your nanite paste and load it before the fight because that's dumb. I've done that. Um, and, and don't feel like your mistakes are irrecoverable. I promise you, everybody out there with the awesome videos, like if you go watch Stitch, uh, all his videos, he'll tell you right in there, I, I lost six ravens to get this two-minute fight on the video. This was the sixth raven. You know what I mean? Everybody makes the same mistakes. You'll see I, I'm in a channel called Bringing Solo Back. It's more for solo pilots and, and a small gang. And not a day goes by where somebody doesn't post, oh, I forgot to load my repper, or hey, I forgot to bring ammo, or hey, I forgot to drink, drop my drones. So don't feel like it's uh, just you or it's insurmountable. I, I still forget. In fact, I lost to a glitch yesterday. I was in that hook bill fit, and it I dragged ammo from the hangar, and it only loaded two of the three launchers. The other launcher had uh, like only 40 rockets. And so when the fight, it fired 40 rounds, and the, the one launcher out of the three was empty because they were grouped. And the, even though it said I had 20 left in the clip, it stopped firing and it wouldn't reload anything. And I died um, because I was too much of a hurry to make sure that my guns were full. So even 11 years in, I still do rookie stupid stuff. Uh, drop loot. Pro tip. When you dock and rep your ship, drop your loot so you don't undock and lose a $10 million frigate with $50 million of loot in it that you forgot to drop. Don't ruin your own payday. I've done that several times. Still, several times. Uh, so, okay. Uh, we were talking about abusing fall-off. So, again, some, some boats get a fall-off. Some get a fall-off that doesn't matter. I think the Atron actually gets a fall-off, but blasters have such short range that it doesn't matter. But, like, the Rifter can abuse it. Scram kiting, get, it's, that's abusing fall-off in another term. Get out to scram range, hold them there. Grouping is easier. It's actually easier on server load. It's easier to manage. Uh, ripple fire. The problem is, is, is reps have gotten so cheap and so powerful with the AARs and the ASBs. Those are fairly new mods that uh, I used to I used to do ripple fire, um, but now it's not really a thing. You're more trying to go for the alpha. You're trying to punch through those reps because even uh, especially when armor fires late. If you can punch through before the armor fires, uh, they're dead. doesn't matter that they technically would have more hit points. All your damage arrived at once. Uh, and that's what the term alpha means, where you're, you're doing all your damage at once and you have a slow cycle. Um, so ripple... It, so it, it goes back and forth. So I, I like the way ripple, ripple fire looks. I haven't tried it lately. I do use split guns occasionally. So uh, on that line, people tell you always fit to the bonus. And that's a, that's a good newbie rule, fit to the bonus. And they always uh, tell you to never mismatch guns. And that's true up until you know what you're doing. So I have a MOA fit. Let me find it here. I have a MOA fit that to fit it, to kill frigates you guys actually killed one it's the double web moa but if you notice that electron and ions i wanted the biggest guns i could fit without sacrificing the tank uh, so i could go up against three four five frigates and, and kill something before i died um same thing i ungroup like on my drake or on even my tengu or raven or something like that something with multiple launchers um I'll, I'll get back to that in just a second, Abram. There is actually a reason I, I have 
there are reasons not to and reasons to. But anyway, I'll group, like, on a Drake, I have six launchers. I'll group them two, two, and two. If I'm going against, like, say a Minmatar boat, you don't know if it's armor, you don't know if it's shield, you just don't know what they're flying. Um, it could be, you know, an armor boat, but they splurged on the explosive, so their weakest resist is EM or something. Yes, you can multiple group. If you hold down shift and drag them, you can make your own groups. Um, anyway, so I'll load, like, using the Minmatar example, I'll load Kinetic because the Drake gets a bonus. I'll load EM because that shield's the lowest. And I'll load Thermal just in case they plug to the EM hole. And then I'll fire off a couple rounds, wait for them to stabilize. You know, I'll, I'll get three or four shots in with each launcher. I'll, you know, I fire them all at once, you know, F4, F5, F6, whatever. And then I'll watch the damage notifications roll by. Uh, Scourge is the bonus on the Drake, so I watch that one first. Oh, okay, I'm hitting for 300. Inferno, I'm hitting for 174. That's garbage. EM for 450. Oh, crap. I'll stop my Inferno because that's the weakest one. Reload to EM. And as soon as it's reloading, I'll stop. I don't stop them both at the same time because I can't click that fast. As soon as it's reloading, I'll stop the Kinetic. Reload to EM. Turn on the other one. Turn on the second one. And now I'm doing best damage. Uh... You know, even though the Drake is technically not a damage selection boat because it's kinetic locked, if they haven't plugged their EM hole, it's still beneficial to switch to EM and boom. Uh, I think I killed I killed Cursed's uh, Cyclone using that method. I switched ammo on him because one of his, I believe it was Cursed that I killed, uh, using that particular technique. I used... I mean, the boat gives me four damage types and six launchers. There's enough enough to go around. Uh, it was a cyclone, so why load? Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Is So the cyclone is a great repping boat, but it's only got, what, five mids, four mids? So there's a limit. Something's got to give. You can't fit full, full tank and still hit, <clears throat> fit tackle. So I was able to abuse a natural effect of the ship. And so, yeah, damage selection, if you have it, use it. Um, if you can abuse your fall off, like you'll see a lot of fits. So going back to the guns. So the reason you don't mix guns a lot of times is a people are new and B, uh, each gun variant has a different optimal, a different fall off and a different tracking. So it's really hard to match up tracking on two different sets of guns. So like this MOA matters less cause it's double web. So I'm trying to remove the tracking problem, if you will. I'm just trying to find a frigate, web it, double web it, scram it, slam into it, nose first, and apply some beautiful blaster love to its hull. Um, so I, I'm trying to minimize the gun differences. But normally you don't mix gun types because it's hard to synchronize those three stats. It is, except that say you fit one, we'll just go simple, one short and one long range. Well, if I'm at short, you're doing 50% of your damage. If I'm at long, you're doing 50% of your damage. At no part, at no distance in that scenario, are you doing optimal damage? You're always going to be under the curve. There are edge cases like this MOA where you try to remove most of the variables. Now it just comes down to whether or not I can catch you. Yeah, you're, so you are doing zero, but... 50 50 sounds like you're at least doing something but in i do mostly solo so just to clarify a lot of my stuff is, is solo based but even in fleet you're never at optimal and there are things you can do so even if they get under your guns if you double click in space or you catch a lucky uh you know bump into something you can catch like uh when I got under that Talos's guns, if there had been a can on field, or if one of you guys had come and bumped me with another frigate, like not just tackled me, but physically bumped me in game, I would have had zero transversal. Even though I was under his guns, he would have lined up perfectly and hit me with battleship damage, full damage, point blank range, on the butt cheeks, game over. Uh, case in point, I did it once. <laughs> This is a really old story. I got tackled out in Bumsville, ratting in a uh, Drake, uh, belt ratting. And a fleet came in. It was like a stiletto or a claw or something came in, tackled me. No hope. Uh, it was heavy missile, cycle time of like seven, eight seconds, no damage. Uh, he, he had me dead to rights. But I realized I had an MWD and I was next to an asteroid belt. So I just dove into the asteroid belt full tilt and he he was at range. He was trying to stay safe. He was out at like 20, 24 K, uh, overheating his, his point. And, uh, he bounced off an asteroid, bounced him to 28. 
I was able before he was able to get back in range. I warped to a planet and cloaked, and his whole fleet landed on me. But luckily, I, I clicked down, and nobody ever clicks down or up. <laughs> uh, so I clicked down, and I was able to avoid losing my my totally ill-fitted Drake uh, with a ship that should have been able to hold me forever till downtime, even without a fleet. And because I was able to slam him into an asteroid, uh, get away. So there are ways to get around it, but at, again, the math, the curve sounds great. The 50-50 sounds great, but at no point are you doing your best application. Uh, if you're gonna be long range, try to avoid getting kited. If you're gonna be, uh, you know, trying to get under, if you're gonna be short range, avoid getting kited. Why gimp yourself out the door? You know, nobody cuts off one arm before they go to work. Uh, the proverbial one-legged man in a butt kicking contest. And there's okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with fleet. There are people who only do fleet. Some people only fight in fleet. I mean, it, don't get me wrong. It's great to have Lodgy. I almost never have it. And so I, I actually am very poor fleet mate because I'll bring the wrong ship, uh, a golem to a caracal fight, as it were. I'm usually fit for solo, so I'm not fit because uh, in when you have logistics, you want uh, a little buffer and a lot of resistance to maximize the Lodgy. And usually I'm active rep with very little resist, very little capacitor, very little anything. So I'm, I'm usually actually a really poor fleet mate as far as ship fitting. Uh, now I can fly my own boat, tackle, and call out targets. But if you want to fly, like, I mean, uh, who doesn't love having jams? Who doesn't have loving having logi? I mean, if you have dedicated tackle and you can fit full tank and full gank at the same time because you don't have to tackle anything, ah, dude, who, who doesn't love, you know, dropping, you know, 2K or 7k volleys in a tornado or whatever. It's just, it's, it's beautiful. So, I mean, if that's how you want to fly, fly. But that said, I recommend that everybody spend a little bit of time solo because it is different. You get a, a little bit different feel for the ship. You're not just an automaton. You're not just, you know, fly here, press F1, whatever. Uh, you understand how the ship, the mechanics, uh, stuff like that works. Like there's, a beautiful thing. So everybody's familiar with the Cancer Garmer, you know, uh, 20k scram and and light speed missiles and all that jazz. Uh, if you go look at the video, there's actually a weird glitch in the way the game calculates missile velocity. So if you ever looked at uh, missile flight times, say it says a flight time of 2.5 seconds, that actually means that 50% uh, of the time the missile only fly two seconds, and 50% of the time the missile will fly for three seconds. So it actually gets 30% more distance. Well, on a Garmer, because it has crazy speed but no flight time, you can actually abuse that. If you get just far enough outside of Garmer's uh, optimal or what, you know, the missile optimal, which isn't exactly right, you can actually remove 50% or whatever the, the multiplier is on the Garmer because only, we'll say, half of his missiles are reaching out to where you are just by positioning yourself and understanding the game mechanic, you can, again, remove 50% of the Garmer's DPS. A lot of cool things you can learn and, and get a feel for a little bit better in solo. Uh, you understand how to fight your ship. Because if, you, if you're if you part of a, a massive F1 blob, all you learn is half the time you don't even learn anything. The fleet warps you, you click orbit on the guy on your uh, watch list, and you hit F1. Um, yeah, you learn all the ships, you learn the capabilities, you learn what to avoid, you learn what you want to fly, uh, you learn, you see cool stuff. Um, so there is there is a huge amount, I believe, a huge amount more learning solo or even small gang, like uh, like five or less, where you're a big cog in a little machine versus a little cog in a big machine. Again, this is all my personal crap, but... Got any more questions? Thank you very much. And, uh, EV University does appreciate your time, and, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the other side of our target locks again soon sometime. Absolutely. Anytime anybody wants to 1v1, or I'll, uh, I'll see when the next war is popping off. Thank you very much again. And Oh, heavens, I didn't realize it was two and a half hours.